Commissioner is switching boxes here in the home city of the National League, sitting with the president of the National League in Oakland. He was with Joe Cronin, the president of the American League. I wonder if that runway might be blocked. <laughs> I'm wondering. This is the case of the missing starting pitcher. <laughs> they might forfeit. <laughs> When the Mets take the field, they'll have Cleon Jones in left field. Here they are, Don Hahn in center, Rusty Stop in right field. There's Tom Seaver. Wayne Garrett to third. Bud Harrelson will be the shortstop. Felix Mian at second, and John Milner at first. Seaver right out there in front of the mound now, Kurt and Lindsay checking the playing surface. There was a slight sprinkle just before game time. He wants to see how his footing's going to be going after a slow hit ball or a bunt. He's a very thorough young man. He doesn't leave very much to chance. He wants to know exactly how everything is. Very well organized, isn't he? He knows what he wants to do before he goes out in the mound. He has a purpose for every pitch. Seaver, a 19-game winner. Losing 10 during the regular year. Season before, he won 21. And he won the clincher here in the fifth game against the Cincinnati Reds to put the Mets in the World Series. Lost a heartbreaker in the opening game of the playoffs where he struck out 13 batters at Cincinnati. Let's take a look at him in slow motion while his pitching coach, Rube Walker, gives you a capsule summary. Tom Seaver's primarily a power pitcher. He has a real good fastball, curve, change, and slider, and he has real good command of all of them. And we'll have the pitching coach Wes Stock of the A's analyze Catfish Hunter for you. Bert Campanera is leading off. Bert's had two hits ten times up in the series. Excellent playoff. He had a hit in every game of the playoffs, the five games against the Orioles. And batted 250 on the air. They're in tight at the corners on him at first and third in the event of a bunt. And Seaver's first pitch is just outside the ball. Seaver led the National League in strikeouts. He's led the National League in strikeouts three times in the last four years. A strict power pitcher with control and know-how. A pop up the back of the plate. Jerry Grody, the catcher, flips his mask away and puts it away. One down. Bert Campaner fouling out to catch a Brody. Joe Rudy will be the batter. Before he steps in, this telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball, intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. One out, nobody on. The A's batting in the first inning. Rudy played a shade toward right. Bando will be on deck. And Seaver curves him for a ball. There's the defensive setup. The Mets will probably shade some of these right-handed batters toward right more than they will with the left-handed pitchers on the mound, figuring they won't be able to get around on Seaver as well. Rudy's had three hits and eight times in the series. And there's a long blast. That's down the left field line. It's a fair ball in the corner, and Rudy's on his way and is in with a stand-up double. Joe Rudy gets his fourth hit. He and Reggie Jackson now are tied for most hits on the A's. Sal Bando. He must have had a hundred reporters around him. Alongside the batting case tonight, Lindsay, trying to get his reaction to the Mike Andrews story. He's the captain of the A's. Strike, Bando kept saying, let me hit with you boys. That's all I want to do. I want to get a little few licks. I've never played in this ballpark. On deck is Reggie Jackson. With that uh, air-resistant propeller to make the bat feel heavier. Pitch of the ball, one and one. Rudy at second, one out, first inning. We're just underway. 
They're playing Bando the same as they did Rudy. A couple of steps toward right field. Fouls it off in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. The breeze is a crosswind from third to first right now. Eight to ten miles an hour. Balls hit in the air to right field might be given a boost as it suddenly dies down. One ball, two strikes to count to Sal Bando. With 288 for the year, 98 RBIs, 29 homers, his best year. He hits a foul down the third baseline. That isn't the spot that Tom Seaver wants to get his curveball. That was a little inside, hanging curveball, Bando a little bit ahead of it. Seaver changed speeds on his curveball quite a bit, doesn't he, Lindsay? He absolutely does. One ball, two strikes to Sal Bando. Fastball just missed. The hometown Met fans trying to do some umpiring. Two and two count. Terrific Tom is his label. The 2-2 pitch. Foul away. Many claim he's the best pitcher in baseball. You can always get into arguments. If he's not, I don't know of anyone much better. His father, Charlie, a member of the United States Walker Golf Cup team. He was a great athlete out on the West Coast. Two balls, two strikes. Lives in Fresno. The Seaver family. There's a strike out on the left side of the Two away. Reggie Jackson. Look at Seaver once again in slow motion. It was a hard slider. He got it inside, but he threw it with such velocity. The ball was by Sal Bando. Reggie Jackson finally got going. He had four hits in a row in game two out at Oakland after going hitless the first two times up in that game. He failed to hit in game one, and he had a miserable playoff against the Orioles, getting only three hits and 21 times up. Two outs for the A's. Joe Rudy at second. No score, top of the first inning. Last ball by Jackson. Strike one to him. That's the pitch as we look at Gene Tennis on deck. That's the pitch upstairs that the A's better lay off with Tom Seaver. But that fastball starts at your chest. It's almost in your eyes when it starts rising. Jackson has a shot to tie or break a World Series record of six consecutive hits in a World Series. He has four in a row. Well, I want to tell you, Seaver was just lightning with that one. No balls, two strikes. <laughs> this is the famous commercial artist who manufactures his own signs and he seems to have one fit for every occasion and every pitch of a ball game. Two down, Joe Rudy at second. Jackson in the hole, two strikes. Seaver's blowing two high fastballs by him. Now Jackson asks for time. They're playing Jackson to pull the right field. Two strike pitch. Struck out two. No runs to hit. One man left at the end of the first half inning. Zero zero. Jim Hunter is a starting pitcher tonight for the Oakland A's. He pitched a shutout last Thursday to nail down the American League Championship for Baltimore. Jim Hunter, a 21 game winner. And here's what his pitching coach, Wes Stock, has to say about Hunter. That pitch is a kind of a pitcher is a control pitcher. He relies on his slider and his fastball, and also he'll make a change on his curveball once you are a straight changeup. He's a pitcher that really has a lot of determination and knows what he wants to do when he goes out there. West Stock commenting on Jim Hunter. Wayne Garrett leads it off for the Mets in the last of the first. He's had one hit at 11 times. That was a home run. First pitch is outside for a ball. Jim Hunter has won 21 games in a row, three successive years. Bourne still lives in Hertford, North Carolina. There's a long blast. 
That one's way out, and it is a home run for Wayne Garrett. He hung a breaking pitch. Here's that swing in slow motion, jumping on what looked like a cactus hunter fastball. Appeared to be about belt high, a little bit inside at the plate. Good swing. Look at that head down to the ball and that full extension of the arm to get all his power behind it. Wayne Garrett has two hits in the series. They've both been homers. They didn't waste any time putting the Mets out in front one to nothing. Felix Mion's had one hit in ten times. Voted the outstanding player of the Mets this year. Tom Seeger won that award last year. Bluffs the bunt. And Hunter's inside for ball two. Jim Hunter led the American League at home runs allowed this year. He gave up 39. He's ball three. A little bit low. Three or nothing. Strike. Three balls, one strike. To Felix Mion. Nobody on, nobody out. The Mets ahead, one nothing. There's a base hit in the left field. Mion makes his turn. Joe Rudy pegs it in, and the first two Mets up are hit safely. Dick Green looked over out to Dick Green. Little flight of hand to him. Some way to play stop. Dobbs had one hit in five times. The Mets fans starting at go Mets. The pitch is fouled back for a strike. And already John Odom is starting to work in the Oakland bullpen. John Blue Moon Odom. We pitched two innings of relief Sunday in Oakland. Rusty Staub still is not swinging normally, I would say, Lindsay, as a Washington batting practice. Not swinging normally, but there was no way he was going to miss the World Series. Into the dirt. One ball, one strike. Hunter's the kind of a pitcher that can get off to a staggering start. You let him off the ropes, he can come back. He's a bulldog. That's one of his great assets, his competitive spirit. One ball, one strike. The rusty stop. Neon on first, nobody out. And the Mets are on top, one nothing on Wayne Garrett's leadoff homer. Here in the last of the first inning. Runner going. You're playing hit and run. And it's through the hole. Perfectly executed. Over to third comes Neon. There's a classic example of the hit and run, flapping the ball back to a vacated spot by an infielder who goes over to cover second base. Watch Felix Mion once again, getting a good jump on the hit and run. Dick Green had given the signal that Campanaris was going to do the covering. And on the hit and run, Stomp getting a good pitch, an off-speed pitch, one that he can weigh down and handle. I would have thought that with Stomp having difficulty with that shoulder, and his hands all season long, they would have tried a little more hard stuff to him, especially inside where he seems to have trouble getting around. Let's watch Rusty again on this perfectly executed hit and run. Mion's off and running. Look at him wait on the pitch. A breaking ball down, low and away. That's a beautiful play, Lindsay, when it's executed. Slap right back to the hole, and uh, John Odom throwing harder now in the open bullpen. His teammate Jim Hunter in serious trouble here. Runners on first and third, nobody out. The first pitch of the strike to Cleon Jones. Jones leads the World Series in base hits with five. Five out of nine. There are the two runners. Meon at third, Staub at first. The Mets ahead, one nothing. They're home before their roaring fans. Into the dirt and bounces away. The 
into the dugout. And the score is Neon. And the Mets have a 2-0 lead. That'll be a wild pitch charge against Jim Hunter. Paul Karen off a chest to pass into the dugout. It's a ground rule, one base, going into that dugout. Rusty Stobbs at second, nobody out. Two runs already in for the Mets. One ball, one strike to Cleon Jones. This is not the Jim Hunter we saw last Thursday in Oakland against Baltimore. Now Jones probably will try and go to right and get this man over to third. Now he dumps it, foul ball. He can hit the right field and hit the right field with power, right, Lindsey? He can hit with power all the way around, and I noticed they shade him defensively playing him to go to the opposite field. He can go that way, has good power all around. One ball, two strikes to Cleon Jones. Jones nicked with injuries, disappointing first half of the season, big month of September, good playoffs, and even better in the World Series. Two balls, two strikes to Cleon Jones. Jones is the best athlete on the Mets. Running, throwing, power, all around athletic ability. Hunter's curve is high and inside to him. Ball three, three and two. Cleon Jones graduated from Mobile County Training High, Mobile, Alabama. See, that city of Mobile has turned out many great players, including Henry Aaron, Willie McCovey, Billy Williams. The 3-2 pitch pops a foul back toward the seat. And Cleon was considered the best all-around athlete in the school's history. He and Tommy Agee were childhood and school buddies, later teammates with the Mets. In high school, they called him Beep because when he carried a football, they said, that's all you heard. Beep, and he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Three and two. To Cleon Jones. Nobody out. Rusty stop at second. Two runs in for the Mets. Struck him out on a sinking pitch. One down. John Miller up. Miller's had four hits in ten times. He had only three hits in the playoffs in 17 times. Miller led the Mets in home runs for 23 this season. Little topper to the box. Hunter bobbles the ball. He tried to back on it. Normally an excellent fielding pitcher. And right now everything's going wrong for Jim Hunter and the A's. Let's look at it again for our center field camera. The second time it's happened in this series where a pitcher has gotten the ball stuck in his glove. It happened to fingers in the first game. Follow through, right foot over left, has to come back on the ball now. And I think he may have made a cardinal mistake trying to look at that runner before he had possession of the ball, making sure that Staub was not going into third base, and with those big pitcher's gloves, the ball can get away easily that way. The A's are hurting themselves with bad fielding plays. They had five errors Sunday, an error here today. That's their sixth error of the series. Runners on first and second for the Mets. One out, two runs in, and the pitch is outside to Jerry Grody who's had two hits in 10 times. The Mets are leading 2-0. If you just joined us, last of the first inning. NBC, proud and happy to send you another World Series. Hey, 1-0 pitch. Curve for a strike, 1-1. One one. Jim Hunter injured himself in a hunting accident his senior year in high school. Had already signed a bonus contract. The A's kept the bonus and had his foot repaired at the Mayo Clinic. And he's come on to become one of baseball's great pitchers. Two balls and a strike to Jerry Grody. Rusty Stobbs at second. John Milner's at first. One out. Playing Grody to the opposite field. There's a curve right at the knees for strike two, two and two. Jim Hunter never, there's stop at second. Milner at first. 
Hunter never pitched in the minor leagues. Tom Seaver only one year. They both had it young. They were ready. The real stars usually are when they're young. The 2 2 delivery. Boy, he blew that one by him. A high inside fastball. Strikeout number two for Hunter. And Don Hahn is up now. Don Hahn has had one hit at nine times. His seasonal figures you're taking a look at. The outfield shallow for him and to right. Two down, runners on first and second. On hits a drive in the left center. Joe Rudy's positioned and has it to retire the side. And Hunter bulldog his way out of that jam. Two runs, two left. There was one error. The end of the first. Back at Shea Stadium in New York, Gene Tennis the batter swings and misses on the first pitch as he leads off the second inning. It's strike one. Tom Seaver stakes to a two nothing lead. Right back with another fastball, grounded off and into the A's dugout. Dennis, the hero of last year's World Series. One for six in this World Series, but has drawn three bases on ball. He had 101 during the regular season, fourth best in the American League. Flag still blows out toward right field. Breaking pitch, and Dennis strikes out on three pitches. Got two fastballs, and then a curveball, and Seaver has now struck out three men in a row. And the heart of the lineup, Sando, Jackson, and Tennis. Davileo, who spent a great deal of his time in the National League, batting six tonight, playing center field, left-handed batter, will step in. And by the way, all of you listening on the American Forces Network in Europe, throughout South America, on FEN, in Asia, and in Japan, we welcome you to Game 3 of the World Series from Shea Stadium in New York. Beaver throws a breaking pitch, a curveball, that stays outside to Davileo, ball one. That's how there are two runs on three hits, no errors. Oakland, no runs, one hit, a double by Rudy, and one error that did not hurt Catfish Hunter. His wild pitch did. 1-0, oh, the count to Davileo. Beaver comes back with the fastball outside. It is 2-0. Oh. On deck is the catcher, Ray Foxy. There is punting hanging around the upper deck of Shea Stadium, and there are some signs out, but not as many as we normally see at uh, Shea Stadium. There's a call strike. One sign says Shea the A. And, of course, there are many you got to believe signs around. Seaver back with a fastball, a little outside. Three balls, one strike to Davileo. Davileo, who hit only 188 since joining the club in August, steps back in. Been playing some center field since Bill North has been injured. Steve ready, throws him the fastball. He gets around on it, but pulls it to the right. Looks like Davileo was guessing fastball then, because normally you will foul it away the other way down the left field line. But he was way out in front of that. Thinking, I would imagine, that Steve was going to try to bust one by him. We've all two strikes. Seaver ready to throw. Throws the fastball. This one is fouled off to the left. Tom, a Fresno, California man, where he was all everything in high school out there, now lives in Greenwich. In the World Series of 1969, he lost 4 to 1 at Baltimore, but then came back and pitched the 2 to 1 complete game in the fourth game here in New York. Back again, fastball catches the outside corner, and there's strikeout number four in a row. But Davidley are looking on a 3 2 fastball. And that'll bring up Fossey. Right-handed hitting catcher, former Cleveland property. Hit 256 throughout the season, but he is 0 for 8 in World Series play. Right-handed batter. That's lead this 2 to nothing on two in the first inning, including a home run by Garrett, his second of the series. Tom Seaver goes to work on the right-handed Fossey, throws him a curveball that drops in beautifully. Strike one. Well, they say the A's scouting report says that Seaver can field. He can hit pretty good. He can throw the fastball faster, faster, faster. Has a good curveball, good change, good slider. Good hard curve. There's a fastball, and it's fouled off down the third baseline and gets past the ball boy down there. 
Well, there are many things to be said about Chase, New York, and the Oakland Coliseum, pros and cons of those two different ballparks. The biggest one I can see, they've got lovely ball girls out in Oakland, California. A couple of young boys up here. <laughs> oh, and two. Oh, he missed with a breaking pitch that gets under the glove of Brody. Rolls back to the screen. One ball, two strikes. Steve has started out camp at at the top of the first inning, getting into foul out to Grody. Rudy laced that fastball for a double off the left field wall, and since then it's been denied, folks. Vandal struck out swinging, Jackson looking, Tennis swinging, and Davalio looking. Comes back with another low and away breaking pitch that goes into the dirt. Eller of Cincinnati back in 1919 and Mo back in 1966 struck out six in a row. That is the record for consecutive strikeouts in the World Series game. Fastball. Fastball. And there is strikeout number five in a row. So Tom Seaver is taking dead aim on the record. And more importantly, he leads at the end of an inning and a half, two to nothing over Oakland. Right now, the story is Seaver. He has struck out five Oakland A's players in a row, and he has a super fastball and outstanding control of it. He's throwing a few breaking balls, but that's just sort of frosting on a cake once in a while. He is throwing the fastball by the A's batters as of right now. Brad Harrelson leads it off in the last of the second inning. Harrelson had fought a game Sunday, hit the ball very hard. His last four times at bat, one of them was a line drive to deep left. Wound up with three hits in his last four times at bat. He's three for eight in the series. Has an RBI hitting at 375. Harrelson finished the season strong. Batting 333 here at Shea Stadium. Catfish on this was in a fastball on the inside corner, waist high. It's strike one. Hunter initially got in trouble with a hanging curve that Garrett hit in the right field seat. That was the first run. There's a breaking pitch outside. Ball one. Then the on followed with the single to left. Stop. Punched the single past Campanaris who went to cover second as the on was running. He went to third. The neon was wild pitched home by Catfish Hunter. Drive straight away, short center field. On comes Davalio and Jackson. Davalio is there and has it. For the first out of the next second. Gavin Harris lost his hat on the way out, and so did Green. Well, here's Tom Seaver. He's won 20 games this year if you include what he did in the National League Championship, but his regular season record, 19 and 10, but that dandy earn run average. And he led the National League in strikeouts for 253, and he struck out five in a row here tonight. Makes the fastball low and inside. Ball one. Seaver has been to bat, or was at bat, six times in the playoffs to the National League. Had two hits, both of them double. One and all, Hunter throws a fastball down the middle. One ball, one strike. Pitcher to pit ever in the minor league. Tom Seaver one year in the minor league. Their careers have been spent almost exclusively in the big time. And now in the World Series. Breaking pitch gets inside. And Hunter has lost his hat. Two and one. Garrett, who hit the home run in the top of the first, stands on deck. Well, that wind has really shifted around. Instead of blowing toward right field, is now blowing very hard toward left, favoring the right-handed hitters. Another fastball down the middle, and it's two and two to Seaver. That's called strike two. It is a rather cool night here, and top coats to raincoats are very much involved. Down to the screen. Some people are bundled up. Those who are simply wearing sports jackets have warmer blood than we do. The ball two strikes. Neither team has really made an announcement about tomorrow's pitchers. There's a lot of conjecture. We'll have it before we leave. Breaking pitch pops up right side. Over comes Tennis. Over goes Fossey. Tennis near the... Well, he goes into the photographer's box. Does he have it? He does. Right there is Paul Pryor. I'm proud that actually saying he got it as Tennis fell into the box. And the Nets fans give him quite a hand. Two out in the New York second of a two-nothing ball game with the Nets lead. Here's Garrett. He really pulled a hunter breaking pitch to get the Nets off to a flying start with the second home run of the World Series. 
Hunter admittedly has been pitching to the eight, nine men in the order, but his control has looked much better here in the second inning. This one is away from Garrett, ball one. He was throwing balls in the dirt, committed one wild pitch, and committed also an error in the top of the first inning. There's another drive, but he got around on this breaking pitch. Garrett pulled one for a home run and gets too far around on this one, puts it foul deep to right. One ball, one strike. Garrett may have won himself a third base job. Low and inside, two and one this year. The Mets have had a perennial search in their 12 year history of looking for a third baseman. They made all kinds of trades, good and bad. A lot of bad ones. Trying to find a third baseman, Garrett may have won the job. There's a pitch too low to him, three and one. Then throwing that curveball that Garrett got around on and fouled it off. Hunter has come low and inside and then low and outside. Doesn't want to make the same mistake again and get that ball up where Garrett can pull it. And he throws this fastball right by him. Three and two. Temperature expected to drop into the high 40s tonight before the end of the game. And the wind is really blowing. Blowing up dust now that causes New Decker at home plate to call time as Garrett steps out. Breaking pitch outside, he has walked Garrett. First walk of the ball game, a two out, and that'll bring up Dion. Dion has committed the error in game number one that allowed the two unearned runs that defeated John Matlack in the New York Nets in game one. Has scored a run here, leading or uh, following Garrett's home run with a single to left, and scoring on the wild pitch by Catfish Hunter. Saab walks out on deck. For those of you who have not seen Felix Dion, he crouches very low and nearly goes halfway up on the bat, choking it. Strikes out very seldom, nearly always makes contact. Good man to use the hit and run on, and this is fouled to the screen. I don't play, strike one. Dick Green at second base, hugging himself for the cold now. Gets ready as Hunter is ready to throw. Ball drilled right foul down the right field line. And two. Russ Getz, the American League umpire at second base, looks like he is standing on a windy street corner. Lifting up one foot, putting the other down, hugging himself. And he is, Mr. Getz has to stay up there for at least another two hours. Oh, and two. Hunter ready, throws the fastball, bound and foul on the third base line, hits off the boxes and off the glove of the ball boy down there. Still on two is Garrett retreats to first base. Mets lead it by two in the last of the second. You know, of course, that Baltimore won the first game of the 69 series. New York took the second on the road and then came back here and the Mets took three in a row. Well, Oakland took the first game of the 73, New York the second, and now they're back here. Well, they're running. But beyond swinging, Garrett was not trying to steal. That is simply Felix beyond great control of the bat, trying to hit and run. That worked so successfully with beyond doing the running and stop hitting the ball to left field back in the first inning. Yogi Berra does not try to steal too many times, but that's the second time tonight he has tried to hit and run. And that's something with a two-strike count on the batter. They think that much of him. Going through the count, not going this time, up high with a fastball. One ball, two strikes. We will have games two and three tomorrow night from New York. Question is, do we go back to the coast for game Saturday and or Sunday? Little line drive at Campanero takes by second base. To get him out of trouble, no runs, no hits, no errors, and Garrett left it first. They've gone to the first two. New York leads it two to nothing. As the Oakland A's pass in the top half of the third inning, it'll be up to Dick Green as to whether or not Tom Seaver ties an all-time World Series record of striking out six in a row. Three's been throwing so far tonight. And the way that wind is swinging, uh, the colder it's getting, these batters are going to have a few bees in the hands. It's all over if he keeps throwing this hard. 
Dick Green struck out four times, makes that uh, two times only, only batted twice in game number two at one time in game number one. Down this ball, so there'll be no record. Third baseman gets, was on the first, and is one out. So the record very quickly goes by the board. Didn't even get a chance to say that it was Green who was batted for. Early in the ball game Sunday, that set up the Kubiak replacement. Kubiak was batted for, that set up the Mike Andrews replacement at second base. The two errors that allowed the three runs. The subsequent squabble over Andrews, was he fired or is he really hurt? And the commissioner's office denying the A's the chance to use anyone else to uh, fill in for Andrews and ordering that he be in uniform, which he is not. Here's Catfish Hunter. First time up in this year's World Series. 227 lifetime average, but during the regular season batted only one. And single. Takes a good cut at a fever fastball strike one. At the end of the season, Dick Rudd informing his 20-game winners to get some batting practice, anticipating this kind of situation in the World Series. Let them bat. There's a swinging strike two. And Hunter had a base hit in his only time at bat. He was allowed one hit, struck out five, comes back with a fastball that just does miss outside. One ball, two strikes. The wind continues to swirl. We'll just say that it's blowing in Chase Stadium. Direction changes. Breaking pitch, hit out towards center field. Over comes John Hahn in a little bit and has Hunter's a pretty good hitter. Beaver was out in front of him. Hunter got around on it. Line at the center. Yeah, here before last, when Captain Hunter negotiated his contract with Charlie Finley, he got so much money, I believe it was $50,000 for uh, pitching and $5,000 for hitting. This is Campana as you fouled out. First inning and waves at a fever sweeping curveball. Strike one. The complete athletes in baseball among its pitches. He can swing the bat, he can throw, and he can feel his position. Strike one pitch from Seaver, so it's another curve. This is low and away. Seaver has done a masterful job spotting that curve. The one base hit by Rudy was off a fastball. One ball, one strike. Come back with the fastball, and Campaneris never had a chance. Ball was in Brody's glove as Campy was starting around. One ball, two strikes. Mets are there, two runs on three hits, no errors. Oakland, no runs, one hit, and a harmless error. Seaver throws another fastball line to right field on a bounce between Milder and Leon and was base hit for Campaneris. Just did get his bat on a Seaver fastball and hit it the other way. And that'll bring up Rudy, who has the only other hit against Seaver, the double off the left field wall. Mando walks out on deck as Rudy prepares to step in. Rudy, the right-handed batter. Jackson and Davileo, the only left-handers in the lineup against the right-handed Tom Seaver. Seaver ready and throws. It's down low, blocked by Grody. Ball one. Grody is now four for nine in this year's World Series, including tonight. As home run power. Fastball, grounded toward Hells and a shortstop. Picks it up, goes on to the honest second base for the force, and that's it. The run, one hit, no errors, and one man left. We go to the last of the third. Seaver, the Mets, still nursing that two to nothing lead over Oakland. No runs, they've had two hits so far. Off Tom Seaver. Now as Kathy Shunner gets ready to go to work to Rusty Staub again, here is Jim Simpson. Rusty Staub, who perfectly bounced the single pass Campanero who was racing to cover second base as Dion was running. Sending me on on the hit and run to third base from where he scored on the wild pitch. Steps in and swings to the fastball, strike one. Staub was in the batter's box. Two decker, the American League umpire, was dusting off the plate. We noticed so anxious was he in the second game of the series on Sunday out in Oakland that as Beyond came on deck, so did Rusty Staub as Garrett was batting. One strike to Staub, the left handed batter. Hits this one off the pitch down the left field line. Over very quickly is Rudy. Drifting toward and in fair territory, the left field line, and almost tripped and fell out there. I don't know that that is one of the parkmarked places that some of the Mets fans here after the championship game dug up or not, or just a bad spot in the outfield. But nevertheless, Rudy almost lost his footing. Staub is out number one. Here's Cleon Jones. 
Hunter had a 3-2 count on him and blew a fastball right by. The striking out in the New York first. Jones, right-handed hitter, and again we'll tell you they plan to hit to right. He sprays to all fields. Down ball toward Bando, takes it on the second off of third base, goes on to first base, and that's two out. Jones swinging on the first pitch, and that'll bring up Milner, who grounded weakly back to Hunter in the first inning. A captive dropped the ball, and Milner was safe on the air. Since the base hit by Stop, the third man up in the first inning, Milner has reached on Amara, Garrett has been walked, and that's it. The first three men got base hit, and since then, none has a base hit for the men, who lead 2 nothing. Inside pitch, making Milner back out and bend over. Strike one. Fastball from Hunter. Milner doesn't hit for average, but does hit for power. Another fastball at the knees for a strike. And someday, John, who is only 23 years old, might be a pretty good hitter for average also. Hunter ready. Fastball is too high. Again, we're in the third inning, the last of the third with two outs. The short score, two runs, three hits, no errors for New York. No runs, two hits, one error for Oakland. Hunter. Jim Sievers throws a breaking pitch that stays outside. It's three and one. Three balls, one strike to John Milner. But Jerry Grody on deck. Fastball misses low and away. And Hunter has walked his second man. And that'll bring up Grody, who struck out swinging in the first inning. Grody went for what looked to be a high inside pitch, pulled very badly, and struck out. Cool weather in New York, 10% chance of rain, they said, and for those of you who have been with us from the outset, know that it did rain before game time, for about 10 minutes. They had the tarp holding on, and then about 8.20 New York time, they took it off, and we got started nearly on schedule, shortly after 8.30. Fastball, line foul just by third base. Bando not guarding the line this early in the ball game. Well off the bag, and that ball curved across the bag and went down the left field line foul. Strike one to Jerry. Don Hahn swings the bat on deck. Still a very small lead off at first base, being held there by Gene Tennant. Pitch is a breaking pitch outside, like the Hunter's slider. Had trouble with the slider. Monty Moore can tell us more about that after he broke his thumb in the All-Star game. One and one. Now a check at first base. Hunter checking over to first base. Milner only stole one base all year. Mets haven't tried to steal it all, but of course they have been hitting and running a lot. Two out here. One ball, one strike. A breaking pitch that's too low. Bossy asked Newdecker, did he go around? They looked down the first base. And Paul Fire said he went around. One ball, two strikes. Well, how often have you seen a catcher a field of the home plate umpire to ask the first base of the umpire and the first base home plate umpire? That's what happened. One ball, two strikes. Again, Hunter checks over to first base. One and two. From the stretch. Catfish Hunter throws a fastball that's fouled over our head. Speaking of Paul Pryor, who made that call from first base, this is his second World Series. His first was in 1967. And when they went from St. Louis up to Boston, where he was to open behind home plate, the first time ever behind home plate in the World Series, his clothes got lost, and he was the biggest man on the crew. He had someone's pants that didn't get to his ankles, someone else's hat, thrown away. He had a ragbag-type uniform, and he said, how embarrassing to be the home plate umpire for the first time in my major league umpiring career and wearing sets of three different uniforms, none of which were mine. Two balls, two strikes to Grody. Mets lead it by two in the last of the third. Hunter Reddy takes something off the stick. It's down toward Campanelles who charges and now throws to second base. 
Well, uh, as almost an afterthought. Could have gone the first base. Doyle's in one man left. At the end of three, the New York Mets lead the Oakland A's two to nothing. third baseman who struck out on the slider back in the first inning stepped in against Seaver and sees the slider go low and away ball one two to nothing New York as we began the Oakland fourth inning game three of the World Series tomorrow night at 8 15 Eastern set time we'll be back on the air with game number four Seaver ready and throws the fastball that is too low I would imagine Monty Moore it'll be Ken Holtzman for the A's and we're guessing Matt Lack for New York Definitely will be a hostman. Uh, some people sit around here today. They thought Stone might start, but we'll find out. Drive toward left field. Over goes Cleon Jones, chasing it down near the line and has the line drive. Mando is out. That'll bring up Reggie Jackson, who struck out looking at a fastball at the knees to end the first inning. as we were discussing, Rube Walker, the pitching coach for the New York Mets, likes to go with a five-man rotation, four days rest. And during the regular season, it proved to be an exceptional method of pitching, and the Mets had great success with it. But in the World Series, he might just go off that for a moment and go with his best in Matlack, who did not go all the way in game number one, remember. Jackson fouls the first one off. Out of play. Matlack in the first game worked six innings. Gave up two unearned runs and only three hits. And if the Mets should have their 2 0 lead held on to tonight, Yogi Bear might be sniffing a real advantage by starting his best pitcher of the last month, John Matlack, tomorrow night. One strike to Reggie Jackson. Jackson, four for 10 in the series. This ball hits the plate. Ball one. As a double, as a triple, as driven in two runs. And at this moment, the wind favors strictly Jackson, blowing toward right field. Tom Seaver, the right-hander, throws a breaking pitch strike. Oh, he has used that curveball when least expected. One ball, two strikes. Count of 0-2, and, and he went with a breaking pitch. You know the man's going to be guarding the plate on that one. Another breaking pitch and struck him out swinging. Strikeout number six. Seaver had five in a row through the second inning. Hasn't struck out anybody until Jackson here in the fourth. That's six of them. And here's Gene Tennant, who struck out swinging at a curveball in the second. Seaver set him up beautifully. Two fastballs for a strike and then struck him out with a curve. Let's leave this by two in the top of the fourth. Seaver fastball outside to Gene Tennant. Ball one. Again, the fastball stays inside, 2-0. and oh. Seaver, in his last game that he pitched, was the clinching game last Wednesday for the National League Championship. 7-2 over Cincinnati. Swing and a miss by Tennis. Coach eight in the third inning. The ball's one strike for Gene Tennis. Only 26 years old, hero of last year's World Series. Absolutely, said he wound up with virtually no endorsement. Anything like that, the ball is down low. Three balls, one strike. Then return to have a good year with 24 home runs and 84 RBIs playing all of this year. Another fastball, and tennis draws his fourth walk of the World Series, the first given up by Stevens. And we'll recall again, he was fourth in the American League in drawing walks during the regular season. Nick Davalillo, who was struck out looking at a fastball on the 3-2 count of the second, comes up. Seaver has given up a double to Rudy, a single to Campaneras, and has walked tennis. That's it in three and two-thirds innings. 
The Mets got their runs in a hurry with a home run and two base hits and a wild pitch. The first three men up in their half of the first inning. Fastball, strike to Davalillo. Fever to repeat the power type pitcher. He goes right after the batter. Right back, change of pace. Brody out in front of the plate with a little ground ball. Throws it wide on first base. And Davalio, a great speed from the left side, beats it out. Again, that Milner saved what might have been a run right there. I don't know how the ball bounces out in that right field area, but he left the bag and left his feet and really made a fine stop of a hard throw that could very well have been going a long, long ways. And Rusty Stop was over right at the foul line. Throwing error on Brody. Tennis goes to second base. So now because of Fever's walk and the throwing error by Grody on the little bounder slowly rolls to the left of the mound. That puts Fever in trouble and Fossey, who struck out swinging at a fastball to end the second, ready to step in. Ray Fossey is 0 for 9 in World Series play. Comes up now as for the second time in this ball game, the A's have a man as far as second base. Rudy was there with one out, but from Jackson struck out to end the first. That fans realizing that Seaver could be in a bit of trouble here. Looks for him to work to Ray Foskey. From the stretch, Tom Seaver throws fastball. Down the back over the head of Seaver. In comes Harrelson. Goes on to first base. He's got him in a close play. Foskey goes after the first base run by Paul Pryor. And now walks away. No run. No hit. One error and two left. They go to the last of the fourth. It's two to nothing. New York. All right, Marty, a change here. After reviewing the situation in the press box, the official scores have said no error for Grody on the throw. The Davalio beat it out, and therefore score that is a base hit. And therefore, in the fourth inning, it should be no run, one hit, and no errors, and two left. Thinking that the throw was wide, but Davalio had the throw beaten. Two to nothing, New York, as we begin the next four. Don Hahn, who lined to Rudy in left field to end the first inning. Steps in, right-handed batter with a closed stance to face Jim Catfish Hunter. Hunter throws, ground ball, that's inside the bag at third base. Sando, hands on hips, watches it go into the left field corner as Hong goes to second base with a double. That's the fourth base hit and the first since the first inning when the first three men got base hit. Sando was really disgusted with himself. Figured he should have reacted to that ball better, but sharply hit inside the third base line. That'll bring up Harrelson. It was then a fly ball to short center field back in the second. Now let us see how Yogi Bear plays this with Tom Fever on deck. Harrelson steps down to look to Eddie Yost. Sando in on the grass at third base, just off the grass. Infield coming in. All of them charging. The bond is laid down the third base line foul. Lindblad and Odom now throwing. Odom has been up the right-hander. Lindblad, the left-hander. And Monty, so many times, you're the Oakland A's broadcasters. If you watch the Oakland A's, not knowing how most people will try a punting playing defensively, the Oakland A's will surprise you. Yes, they have a lot of uh, trick plays. They work, and uh, of course, there was one that didn't work the other day in uh, the game in Oakland where Sal Bando charged. They have a whole series of plays here where either the second baseman will charge. Ordinarily, it's Bando charging and Campanaris going over to cover third. Alton, switch hitter, jokes up on the bat. Vando went on the grass. They're still looking for the butt. Fastball inside. He did not offer at it. One ball, one strike to Harrelson. Obvious now, at least in the early going, the may change as Joe switches the signal back and forth to Harrelson, who looks down to him at third base. If they're trying to get on over to third base, let Seaver with a ground ball or fly ball or base hit to get him in. And, of course, Garrett would also have an opportunity. One ball, one strike. Hunter ready. Almost hit him. Down low and inside. Two and one. Well, as a rule of thumb, if you know a man is going to bunt, the one thing you like to do is to keep the ball up so he will pop it up. The lower you get it, the easier it is for him to bunt it along the ground and make the play good. That ball was low and inside. Two balls, one strike. On leading off at second base. 
There's a pitch, and he was swinging on this one, and maybe that's what Hunter thought he might do last time. Fouls it off to the right. Two balls, two strikes. And now a two strike. Harrison most likely will be swinging away, and he may have turned something or pulled something not serious as he swung very hard at that ball, steps out, bends, so bends over for a moment, now steps back in. Mets lead it by two, trying to make it three. On a ready, the fastball popped up, foul out of play behind home plate. Still two and two. Tom Seaver, jacket over his shoulder, kneels on deck. Al stands right up to that plate. On a ready, throws the 2-2, hits this one off the fist toward right field. Back goes Jackson, short right field. On at second base, tagging, and Jackson's got quite an arm as he fires it all the way to third base on the line. And draws the cries and oohs and ahs of admiration from the partners and Mets fans. That'll bring up Tom Seaver. Tom Seaver. Fouled out to Tennis, who fell into a photographer's box to make the play in the second inning. All for one in World Series play. Had a couple of doubles in the playoffs. Lindblad and Odom continue to throw out on the open bullpen. Seaver bats right-handed as he throws and swings and waves at a breaking off speed tip. Strike one. Mets have their two runs on four hits, including Garrett Homer. The A's have yet to score, have had three hits, and committed one error. Hunter glancing back at second in the home, now throws, and Silver swings and misses with a high fastball. Two strikes. Wayne Garrett, who led off the Mets first inning with a home run, stands on deck. All in two, the captain receiver with one out and Hahn at second. Now the fastball down too low, and it's one ball, two strikes. Bossy turned around to Jerry Newdecker at the American League as though that might have been a strike. Down the right field line is Augie Donatelli, who made the call on Harrelson in the game on Sunday out in Oakland when he was introduced tonight. The Mets fans gave him a big boo. One and two, and that's foul of the three. Still one ball, two strikes. Our ball game just a little bit more than an hour old. We are on the last of the fourth. On a chilly night in New York. And what's more, it's supposed to be colder tomorrow night. One and two. Temperature dipping into the 40s. Breaking pitch, strike three call. Third strikeout as Seaver looks at a curveball. On a one and two count. And that will bring up Garrett. Who hit a hunter curveball for a home run in the first and then drew a walk in the second. And very quickly, West Stock, the pitching coach, comes out to talk to Catfish Hunter. Just a little reminder, I'm sure, uh, Jim has had a lot of trouble this year with the leadoff men. Uh, in this league, uh, a little fellow named Al Bumbry of Baltimore who hit something like only seven home runs all year, hit four of them off Hunter, and he's a leadoff man for Baltimore. Uh, Freddie Potchak of the Kansas City Royals, a little bitty guy, hit home runs off him. And here's Garrett, who's not all that small and has a pretty good home run hitting reputation, and they know where he likes the ball, and it, they're going to walk him right here and fix the beyond. I think they put it up to Hunter, Jim. And Hunter, who gave up the home run and then walked Garrett, obviously has said that there's outside ball one because, as you'll recall, Bonnie, in the second inning, Garrett was served up another hanging Hunter curveball, and he drilled that one deep but foul in right field. So after a home run that was for real, and the ball hit so hard as to upset him. Hunter's decided to get rid of Garrett and stick him on first base. There's ball three. That'll be men on first and second with two out. And the right-handed Neon coming up. Garrett, of course, also is a left-handed swinger. Neon is right-handed. There's ball four. Not only that, Neon is not known for power the way he chokes up. Third walk given up by Jim Catfish Hunter. Here comes Dion, who singled and scored on a wild pitch and sent a soft line drive to Campanaris here at second base. One for two. They play Felix the other way in the outfield. 
Around to the right. Staub stands on deck. Hunter has elected the fifth to be on and now begins to go to work. Oh, play at second base. Not in time. As a matter of fact, the ball was on the first base out of second base and Green had to stick his glove back toward first base as he went into second. Hunter looking. Hahn dancing off second base. Throws the fastball. It's foul deep to left. That's strike one. Well, I'll tell you something. Bud Harrelson's not supposed to have power. Jerry Grody's not supposed to have that kind of power. And Mion doesn't have that much power. But Harrelson has nearly hit a home run on one occasion. And has sent out fielders very deep on others. Grody sent Jackson to the farthest part of left center field to haul in his drive on Saturday. And Mion just got around on that ball. Now he pops this one up. This also, I believe, will be out of play. Bobby comes back toward the screen. It lands on the screen. And will roll down from there. Owen two to Felix Neon. Neon very difficult to strike out. And he did a superb job the year for the Mets. Just nine errors, but a very costly one on Saturday in game one of the World Series when he let a ball go right through his legs. As he said later, I simply did not get down to the ball. Two runs scored. That's all the A's needed. On her throws, ground ball toward Bando. Tough play, off in the third base, goes into foul territory. A hop really came up to Bando there, who is going to his right toward the line. Bases are loaded, and that will bring up the left-handed swinger, Rusty Staub. The official scores have not yet. Well, now they say it is a hit. Just now, flat. Very tough chance for Bando at third base. That's the fifth hit off Catfish Hunter. Bando walked over toward Hunter. Lazan at third. Garrett at second. Neon on at first. And Rusty Saab. One for two tonight. The top man in RBI. In the flux and in the regular season. At the plate. Mets lead it two to nothing. Looking for the big hit from Rusty Stout. Catfish Hunter goes to work. Throws him a fastball. Grounded right back to Hunter. Hunter throws on the first base. And Stout is a very easy out on the first pitch. No run. Two hits. No errors. And the bases are left loaded. At the end of four, the Mets do the A's zero. Gowdy, Lindsey Nelson, Tony Kubek moving into the fifth inning. For the Mets leading the A's two nothing. And Dick Green the batter. Batting in the number eight spot for Oakland. Seaver curves him outside, ball one. Green bounced to third, his first trip. And he's still uh, looking for his first hit of this series. Go for five now. Foul ball. Levels the count at one and one. Catfish Hunter will be up next, and then Bert Campanaris. For those that joined us late, the scoring came in the first inning. Garrett led off with a homer for the Mets. Neon single, stop single in the third in the hit and run. Foul ball. And then Neon scored in a wild pitch, and that's been it. The A's have left four. The Mets have left seven. One ball, two strikes to Dick Green. Terrific Tom in. Another strikeout for him. Seven strikeouts for Seaver. That was a curveball. Dick Williams, there's Sal Bando and talking it over with Green. We're talking about Seaver, Lindsay. What are we going to do with this fella? That would be the subject of conversation, all right. Jim Hunter flied out his first time. Fastball right by him for strike one. Like two, nothing and two to Jim Hunter. And Mr. Tom Seaver, right now wearing him on his watch chain. He's the man in charge. The two strike delivery, he had Hunter reaching. Foul ball, 0 oh and 2. The score, the New York Mets two, the Oakland A's nothing. 
John Matlack will pitch tomorrow night for the Mets and Ken Holtzman will be going for the A's. They were the two opening game pitchers of the World Series. Two strikes. A ball one and two. On deck Bert Campanaris. Just a piece again. One ball two strikes to Jim Hunter. Seaver started twice in the 69 series. He lost the first game four to one at Baltimore. And he came back to pitch a two to one 10 inning complete game victory in New York in game four 69. Ball two strike two. The Mets lost that opening game to Baltimore. And the Miracle Boys won four in a row making unbelievable catches. The 2 2 pitch. Back three. Eight strikeouts for Tom Seaver. The all time World Series strikeout record in one game, 17, held by Bob Gibson of the St. Louis Cardinals. And if you joined us uh, late, at one stage, Seaver had a shot at tying a World Series record of six strikeouts in a row. He struck out five in a row when he faced Green in the third. A Green bounced out. Campanaris bluffs the bunt. Ball one to him. Campanaris has one hit in two times. Seaver actually throws two kinds of fastballs, I think, Lindsay. He throws the one that he holds across the seams at time, the one that takes off, and then he'll hold one with the seams that he will sink. Move in on the right-handed hitters. Good pitch. One ball, one strike to Campanero. Now ball makes the count one and two. And Seaver staying ahead of those hitters. He not only has good control, he has good control in the strike zone. He can spot the ball, especially when he's ahead. He can go high and tight. He can go low and away, up, down. Two down, nobody on. One ball, two strikes to Campanaris. Foul again. You notice as uh, we showed you our handheld shot, how Garrett plays the right-handed batter in tight at third. You have to. One-two pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Campanaris does something. Joe Rudy is the next scheduled batter. Two two delivery. Strike three and Seaver is going to challenge Bob Gibson's record tonight maybe. He struck out the side in the fifth. At the end of four and a half it is New York two Oakland nothing. Stadium, Jim Simpson with Monty Moore. And in the last of the fifth, Captain Shunner will go through the middle of that lineup for the New York Mets. Leon Jones, John Milner, and Jerry Grody. Hunter in trouble in the first when Garrett hit a curveball for a home run. Beyond and stopped the back-to-back -back singles. And then the wild pitch and scored beyond. Since that time, with one exception in the last inning, when there was an infield hit on an intentional walk, when Hunter loaded the bases with two outs, Catfish has not been in trouble. He trails two to nothing, last of the fifth, and for the second half of the ball game, here again is Monty Moore. Thank you, Jimmy. Joe Rudy, out in left field, is playing Cleon Jones very deep. Here's Hunter's first pitch, and it's a curve in there for a call strike. Jones had seven home runs in the last ten games the Mets played this year. He really was on a hitting tear at the time they needed him the most. Hunter throws the ball by him in the outside corner, swinging strike two. You can survive first inning troubles against some pitchers, but a guy like Seaver who's really got it tonight when you get behind by two to him early. The bouncing ball to Hunter near that he's got this one, throws the first for the out. One away. Hunter ordinarily a very, very fine fielding pitcher, as Jim said a little while ago, a complete athlete. But early in this game, though he got out of it without it hurting him, he did drop a ball. Hit back to him. It was John Milner who's at the plate now who hit it. 
The A's play Milner strictly as a pull hitter, and Hunter misses inside at high ball one. Oakland playing this series without their regular center fielder for the year, a very sensational young player by the name of Billy North. Breaking ball hits the knees for a call. Strike one and one on Milner. One one pitch. Long drive to right field. He got all of that one. Here it is. Off the fence. Holds him to a single. Builder hit one just below the orange line in right field, and Jackson played it perfectly. A long drive by Miller that just missed the foul pole area. Well, that's got to be one of the hard hit singles of the year right there. Jerry Cody. Well, Jackson has had two plays to make in the outfield tonight, and he's made one strong throw. He played this pitch uh, drive off the wall perfectly and didn't even have to throw it back in to hold the man. There goes the runner. The pitch swung on and hit up into the air. A little looper in the left. Joe Rudy will get it, and Milner goes back to first. Two down in inning number five, and the batter now is Don Hart, who really crossed up the A's by hitting one inside the bag at third for a double his last time up. The A's outfield has been playing him well over into right center and very shot the whole series. Pitching him out there, but Hunter let go an inside pitch, and Hahn ripped it. Miller draws the throw at first. It's a very short lead he has there. Mets lead 2 0. They've had six hits. Fastball outside to Hahn. It's 1 0. Ray Fossey, the ace catcher who wears contact lenses, just asked for time at the plate and if he's having to adjust one of them or something blowing his eye or what. Back to play. Hunter sticks to the plate. High fly ball to left field. Not very deep. Rudy coming in, and he's riding right with it. He's got it. And that's all for the Mets here in the fifth inning. The score after five innings of play, the Mets two and the A's nothing. The Cubs are off the Mets first inning with a home run. The Allen stopped singled, and the Allen was wild pitch home. A pitcher catfish hunter, and that's been it as far as the scoring is concerned. As far as pitching is concerned, Tom Seaver has looked incredibly fast tonight, has struck out nine, Shut off the powerful A's with only three hits. But it's the sixth inning and Rudy to lead it off, followed by Bando and Jackson. The A's, as the game moves on, hope to make a move against Tom Seaver. Here's Monty Moore. Joe Rudy, who had one of the A's hits and the most solid of the bunch, a line drive off the wall and left in the first inning, comes on for the third time tonight. It'll be interesting to have the A's compare Tom Seaver and Jim Palmer after this thing is all over. The pitch. Long drive to right center field. That ball is tagged pretty well. Hahn is at the fence and leaping. He's got it. Don Hahn with a leaping catch just short of the right center field fence. 396 feet away. It wasn't a spectacular catch. The ball really didn't get quite to the fence, but it would have if he hadn't have caught it. He leaps just short of the wall by about three feet, but I'll tell you, Joe Rudy put a charge in that one. Rudy's been the A's best hitter for the past three weeks, and he has hit a couple of balls like rockets here tonight off Seaver. One out, here's Sal Bando. Pitch to Sal as a curve, and once in a while, I've noticed tonight, the only one Seaver's really missed badly with is once in a while that curveball will snap off way, way outside and in the dirt. That's when he's trying to get a little extra on it. Joe Rudy with excellent power to right center field. Just came within about five feet of hitting one out of here. Bando takes the whisker duster inside and high. Seaver started him off with a curve, hoping to get him leaning, and then busted one by him on the inside. It's two balls and no strikes. Bando fouls it off.
against the A's team captain Sal Bando, who struck out in the first inning and lined out to left in the fourth. Two one pitch. Low with a fastball. It's three and one. It's only the second batter he's been behind in the game. He walked Gene Tennis. And now he's at three and one on Bando. Fastball hit deep in the center field. Hans on a move again. He turned the wrong way. It's over his head and off the fence. Sal Bando is on his way to second with a stand-up double. Don Hahn, the center fielder, turned the wrong way on that drive. It was to his left, and he turned to his right. But he wouldn't have caught it anyway, and that's two shots in a row hit by right-handed batters to start the sixth inning. And now Reggie Jackson comes up, and if he gets hold of one, it could be tied up in a hurry. Jackson has struck out twice in this ball game. And the Mets fans start to buzz a little bit as the A's power and come up a little bit here in the sixth. Reggie Jackson, the American League home run champion, stands at the plate, gets the curve, and it's a snapping curve for a call strike on the knees. 0 and 1. Boy, Seavers really worked on him. You can tell the great pitchers when they know they have a challenge at that plate. There's no sameness to their pitching. They mix it up, and they throw the best they've got. The pitch to Jackson. Curve again. Strike on the outside corner. Reggie Jackson is yelling at Jerry Newdecker, the home plate umpire. Well, it's like the train that comes by every day at about the same time. You know it's coming. Jackson has seen two curveballs in a row now, and he almost got a feel that the Express is going to be here just any minute. Beaver starts to get ready, and Jackson isn't ready, so they call time. Well, the good pitchers like to stay ahead of the good hitters, and Beaver's been ahead of Jackson all night. The 0 2 pitch. That's probably struck him out. Winning strike three. And that's that express we were talking about. Strikeout number 10 for Tom Seaver. And he has paid Reggie Jackson three times tonight. Now here's Gene Tennis, who also has good power. There are four men in a row in the middle of the A's lineup who can hit the ball out of the park. Rudy, Bando, Jackson, and Tennis. Curveball to Tennis is a beauty. Calls strike one. Seaver gets that. Here's the pitch. Fastball line to left field. It's hooking and goes clear into the corner. Here's Sal Bendel coming in to score, and Gene Tennis goes to second with a double. It's a 2-1 to one ball game, and the A's have really teed off on Tom Seaver here in this inning. Yeah, it's amazing how that ball will go down that left field line here. And look as if it's going to hook, and it just falls. It's diving out there tonight at the foul line. The A's are base hit away from tying the ball game now, and here's Vic Davalillo, a late season acquisition by the A's from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Oakland purchased him to be a pinch hitter. He holds the major league record for most pinch hits in a season. 1971 with the St. Louis Cardinals, he set that record. The pitch to him, the curveball line to the second baseman. Mian is playing perfectly, and he throws him out at first. A big play by Mian, and that's the scouting report out right there. He played Davalio to throw the ball, and he pulled it sharply right at him. Oakland gets the run on two hits, the man left on, and the score in the middle of the sixth is 2-1, to one, the Mets lead. New York Mets got their two runs in the first before anybody was out, and the Oakland A's have waited until two were out in the sixth inning before they got their first. It's last of the sixth and Monty Moore. Buddy Harrelson has been a spark plug of a player for the Mets. Is 0 for 2 in this ball game, batting left-handed. He's a switch hitter. Hunter comes to the plate with a breaking ball, and this is low and inside. Harrelson likes to walk. He'll go up and take that first ball a lot of times, and he is a good base on balls man. Hunter throws a strike with Harrelson taking all the way. The difference in this ballgame right now is a wild pitched home run in the first inning. It's the only wild pitch that Hunter has issued this year with a man at third base. 
Harrelson rips one right up the middle of base hit. Bud Harrelson continues to harass the A's, both in the field and at the plate. That was a line drive right back through the box, and now Oakland. Captain Sal Bando goes in to talk to Jim Hunter, and the reason he's going in now is to set up a defense against Tom Seaver, who's coming up. Oakland showed in the first game of the World Series that they large their second baseman with a pitcher at the plate once in a while. Gay's bullpen goes to work. Darrell Knowles and Raleigh Fingers. Here's a pitch, but it's foul. And Bando is charging hard from third base. Tennis hard from first. Now Bando goes in to talk to Hunter again. Early in the game for long relievers, it was Lindblad and John Odom. But now we're in the last half of the sixth inning, and the short relievers, Knowles and Fingers, are up. Harrelson off first. Seavers the plate. Here's the pitch. He takes a strike. And now will the Mets bunt with two strikes on Tom Seavers. Bando with another message to Jim Hunter. Last year in the World Series, six of the seven games were low-scoring, one-run ball games. We've had one two-to-one game already in this series. The pitch is bunted foul by Seaver. That's the strikeout. Number four for Jim Hunter. One out back to the top of the batting order, and here is Wayne Garrett, and Hunter threw a home run ball to him in the first inning, and has walked him twice since. Wayne's brother, Adrian, was in the Oakland A's organization for a while, a couple of years back. Got up and didn't get a whole lot of at bats with the A's and eventually went to the Chicago Cubs where he played this year. Harrelson off first. Here's a pitch. It popped foul out of play. Garrett turns around at the plate rather disgusted like. I think he feels that he got his pitch right there. Look for Oakland to do some pinch hitting in the seventh inning. They have Fosse, Green, and Hunter due to bat. See Jesus Salou running around in the Oakland dugout. Darren Johnson has a bat in his hand. And Alan Lewis has a helmet in his hand, which means they're hoping somebody can get on and he'll run. Here's a pitch, swinging, strike two. Catfish challenge, Garrett, that time and got it by him. Two to one. The Mets are leading the A's. Hunter to the plate again, a pie, a ball. Games here in New York. The next couple of nights. One ball, two strike pitch. Curveball fouled away. Boy, Garrett is a very aggressive hitter at that plate. We're in the last half of the sixth inning. Mets lead the A's two to one. The Mets have seven hits, Oakland five. There's been one home run in the game. Garrett had it. There have been for very close. Fossey giving an inside target. The pitch up high. Ball two. The Oakland A's have an outfield of Joe Rudy in left, Vic Davalillo in center, and Reggie Jackson in right. They're swung around to the right. Hunter's pitch. Curve, strike three call. He hit the outside corner, and New Decker's consistent. He's giving both pitches. Are both pitchers that same pitch tonight? There are two down. It's five strikeouts for Hunter, ten for Seaver. And now here's Felix Mion. He's had two hits tonight, both singles, and he lined out to Campanaris his other time up. Have a man at first for the Mets, but Harrelson who let off the inning with a single. Hunter's pitch, line drive, left center field. They're going to have to go to get this one. Davalillo on the run. He's got it. 
Dick Deverleo playing the on in right center field. Had to turn on the gas, and the little veteran just ran the ball down and caught it on the dead run. For the Mets in the sixth, no runs, one hit. They left a man, and the score is 2-1 to one, New York. More as we go to the open seventh, and Monty was exactly right. Both Pat Burke, former Chicago Cup, now Big Strong, hitting first baseman for the Oakland A's, comes out to swing a bat, and Jesus Salou is in the on deck circle, which means that Fossey and Green will be batted for. It's two to one, New York. They got Goodwood on the ball in the sixth, Rudy hitting the ball deep to center field, Vando doubling, and Tennis doubling him home. The A's and the pinch hitters go to work, and so does Monty. Pat Bird joined the A's late in the season in a trade with the Chicago Cubs for last year's pinch hitting star for the A's in the World Series, Gonzalo Marquez. Here's the first pitch to Burke, and it's a fastball strike on the outside. Two home runs for the A's, one of them off Nolan Ryan. And then another very hard-throwing right-hander. Tom Seaver winds up the pitch to Burke. Curveball, it's over but low. One ball and one strike. Mets two and the A's one. The Mets got two in the first and Seavers hung on since. The pitch to Burke. Fastball just missing outside. It's two and one. And he's really trying to keep that ball away from this big left-hander. Burke checks in about the size of a small linebacker in football. It was about 225, 230 maybe in weight. The A's have some power on the bench. They'll use Burke and Alou and probably Darren Johnson. 2-1 pitch. Inside. Seaver is screaming at the plate umpire. It's three balls and one strike on Burke. He changed his pattern a little that time. He'd been going outside on Burke and tried to blow it from the inside. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Strike two call. Burke hasn't had a swing yet. It's a full count of three balls, two strikes. The Mets infielders guarding the foul lines at first and third to pitch. High foul ball off third end of the stand. One big noticeable difference in this ballpark and the one in Oakland. The stands come out to within a few feet of the foul lines here at Shea Stadium, whereas in New York, the Oakland Coliseum uh, Stadium is like 120, 140 feet from the foul line. 3-2 pitch. Burke hits the fly ball to right field, and it's pretty deep, but Staub is back on the warning track, reaching up and picking it off. He didn't get all of that one. So Pat Burke is out number one here in the seventh inning, and now Jesus Salou comes on. Salou in this series, three hits and nine at bat. He hit 306 for the A's after he was picked up from the Houston Astros. Number 22, Jesus Salou. Well, the A's have had the Met outfielders a little running in the last couple of innings and the Met bullpen goes to work now. Darren Johnson is out on deck as a possible pinch hitter for Jim Hunter. Jesus Salou, one of three Alou brothers to have played with the Oakland A's in the last three years. Felipe was the first last year in the World Series. Matty Alou and now Jesus. Beaver winding. Here's a pitch. Foul ball out of play. Strike one. You really have to work at walking Jesus Salou. Harry Parker, a right-hander for the Mets, is in the bullpen. And Ray Sadecki, a left-hander. Here's a pitch to Alou. Curveball, bounce on the ground, deep shortstop to Bud Harrelson. He's got a good arm, and he shows it off by throwing him out. Two up, two down. Seaver has eliminated two of the A's top pinch hitters, and now here is the man who was the A's designated hitter this year and did quite a job. Darren Johnson for Oakland. He drove in 81 runs for the A's, hit 19 home runs, and played the last five weeks of the season with a bone chip in his hand. Five weeks of the season with a bone chip in his hand, and it was hurting him so badly he could hardly grip a bat. He was a very strong candidate to knock in 100 runs if he hadn't been hurt. But Darren Johnson bats for Catfish Hunter in the seventh inning with a Mets leading 2-1. to one. Seavers pitch. Fastball outside.
Seaver working quickly, comes to the plate with a curve and misses with it at two balls and no strikes. Johnson pinch hit in Sunday's long game out in Oakland. And got a double off the wall in left center field. He's one for one in the World Series. This, after 17 years in pro baseball, is his first World Series appearance. In there, a call strike. Darren took one right down the middle that time on 2-0. and oh. It is now 2-1. and one. Seaver winding, kicking. Fastball thrown right by him, swinging, strike two. Tom Seaver, the ace of the Mets. Working with a 2-1 to one lead, throws to the plate. Strike three call, Johnson takes a fastball, and Seaver cuts down three A's, pinch hitters here in the seventh inning. The score of the Mets, two, and the A's, one. Green, who was batted for by Alou, is out of the game, and Ted Kubiak is now second base. And of course, Darren Johnson looks at a third call strike, batting for Captain Hunter, and that is brought on Dell Knowles to do the pitching. Knowles, who had to sit out last year's World Series because of a bad hand, has been in both games thus far and has an absolute perfect record, except he did commit a throwing error. Other than that, no runs, no hits, and no walks, and also no strikeouts. Knowles, the left-hander, will be facing Staub, Jones, and Milner. Two of those three are left-handed. It's two to one in the seventh. The Mets got both of their runs in the first on the Garrett home run. Back-to-back -back singles by Beyond and Staub in a wild pitch. And, of course, Kenneth doubled in Bando in the sixth to make it two to one. Here's one. Rusty Staub going for the first. Darrell Knowles pitch. A slider out away from him. is fouled off. It's strike one. Rusty Staub. Hit a bouncer through the left side of the Oakland A's infield in the first inning that led to what now is the lead run of the game. Knowles comes inside on Rusty and misses it. Here's a ball on a strike. Darrell Knowles appeared in 52 games this year as ERA 3.09. He's been in the major leagues for nine years. Most of that time spent with losing teams, Washington and Philadelphia. Stop fouls the pitch away. It's the ball and two strikes. Knowles is 31 years old. He's from Brunswick, Missouri. He has averaged pitching in over 50 games a year for eight years. That's a lot of work for a little guy. His greatest pitching effort this year was as a surprise starter at Fenway Park in Boston. He won a game one to nothing going all the way. Stop fooled on a breaking ball, just dragged it foul off the first base line. Bob Jones and Milner will bat for New York here in the seventh inning. Bob's still letting go of the bat with one hand. He's got a very sore shoulder. Nose to the plate. In the dirt of ball. At first. Stays in the game and plays first base for Oakland. Ted Kubiak at second. Gene Tennis now behind the plate. Fastball inside. That one had stopped, but it missed the plate. Rusty was leaning a little bit, and Knowles just missed that inside corner, and Gene Tennis is arguing with the plate umpire, Jerry Newdecker. And this Met crowd is starting to say, let's go Met. Little wind gust blows up here, and Stop backs off the plate. Rusty Stobbs' home runs in the playoffs were off left-handers of Cincinnati, Gullett, and Grimsley. 3-2 pitch. Little fly ball to left field. Joe Rudy came in. Now he's going back, and he's got it. And Stobb hasn't pulled the ball tonight. One down in the seventh inning, and here's Cleon Jones. Well, you hate to see the great stars, Jim, uh, not be 100% healthy. And Rusty Staub is certainly not 100%, but he's given 100% effort here. Well, Staub, of course, I think they did great solace from the fact that he singled the last time up out in open. He's got an important base hit tonight, but as you said, he's not swinging the bat like he used to. Jones hitting a sharp grounder to Campanera as he eats it up and throws over to first for the out. 
Two out, seventh inning, and here's John Milner who hit a line drive just below the orange line, 341 feet away from home plate into the right field corner of Shea Stadium. Reggie Jackson played it perfectly and held him to a long, hard-hit single. That was in the fifth inning. He drove in 72 runs with a 239 average this year for the Mets. Knowles missing outside, ball one. Catfish Hunter tonight, but six innings, gave up two runs and seven hits. He walked three and struck out five. Very fine performance. They were looking for a pitcher's battle here tonight with Hunter against Seaver, and so far it has been Seaver overpowering with 11 strikeouts. 1-0 pitch. Missing high, ball two. Tomorrow night, two left-handers who started the series out in Oakland. Matlack for the Mets, Holtzman for the A's. Knowles behind, 2-0. Oh. Swinging strike. Boy, he had a good cut right there. Milner's not a big guy like you might expect a home run hitter to be, but very wiry. Gene Tennis hangs out of sight. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Sidearm sinkers inside. Goes to the backstop off the mid of tennis. It's three balls and one strike. The eighth inning, the A's will have their top of their batting order up again. Campanaris, Rudy, and Bando. And if anybody gets on, Reggie Jackson. The A's leveled about four line drives in the sixth inning, two for doubles. Here's the pitch. Strike. Called. A beautiful pitch from Nolan. is all the way on the red. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. He lost him, ball four. And now he's walked the left-handed batter, and now he's got a pitch to a right-hander who can hit the ball out of the park. Brody struck out and bounced into a force out and flied to left. The Mets have seven hits. The A's at five, there has been one error in the game. That was by the pitcher and had no consequence in the scoring. Jerry Grody, the Met catcher, cocks the bat. Nose comes to the plate and it's low for ball one. In playing the Mets, the pitchers don't have to worry about holding runners on all that closely because they just don't try to steal. But the pressure is on the second baseman for Oakland who calls the coverage on running plays. Foul ball upstairs. Twice the Mets in this series have hit the ball through the infield. Tonight, Rusty Stout, who has not been pulling the ball at all, was at the plate, and the A's coverage called for Campanaris, the shortstop, to cover second base and Staub hit it right through there. So those calls sometimes are very important. Knowles looking to the plate, throwing to first. He has one of the best moves in the American League. But he didn't catch Milner, who was only off just a step or two. Paul Lindblad has joined Raleigh Fingers of the Oakland bullpen. There's a bouncing ball, a shortstop. Campanaris has got it. Throws over to second. Kubiak takes the fourth play. On Milner to retire the side. After seven innings in New York, it's the Mets two and the A's one. Number three of the World Series, the Mets lead it two to one, getting both of their runs in the first inning. Came up with their one run of the six. Tom Seaver to face the top of the batting order. Campanaris, Rudy, and Bando. And here's the first pitch to Campanaris hit on the ground to left field. The A's little road runner is on, and in a one-run ball game, that's the one man Seaver wanted off the bases the most. But there he is, perched on first base. Campanaris, who's led the American League in stolen bases five of the last six years, sold 34 for the A's this year, three in the playoffs, and two so far in the World Series. And the Met bullpen crew goes to work, headed by left-hander Tug McGraw. Joe Rudy, the batter for Oakland in the top half of the eighth inning, and he has hit the ball 
more consistently hard than any other A's player tonight. He's doubled the left, and he hit one to the wall in right center that was caught in the sixth inning. Campy, big lead off first, drawing a throw from Seaver. Harry Parker, a right-hander, has joined Doug McGraw, a lefty for New York, in the bullpen. Mets leading 2-1. to one. Joe Rudy digs in. Wayne Garrett is hugging the foul line at third. Big lead for Campanaris. He's not going. The curveball is off in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Brody seems to be a very fine catcher as far as getting rid of the ball. He's made a strong throw to second in the series twice. And he didn't show any fear at all with Campanaris on at calling that curveball then, and he dug it right out of the dirt, and Cappy wasn't going. Brody, a fine catcher. Campanaris off first base. Here's the pitch to Rudy. Strike at the knees. A good fastball from Seaver. Seaver wants that ball down here. He needs the ground ball. He'd like to get two and one. Mets giving up some ground to the left of the third baseman Garrett as he's trying to protect against the extra base hit. And in giving up that ground, Campanaris got on by hitting one through that hole. Seaver, easy throw over to first base, just reminding Campanaris he knows he's still there. Seaver drops down slowly to the waist. There goes Campanaris. The pitch is taken. Grody's throw to second. is not in time. He steals it. What a throw that was. It was right on the bag. Campy Campanaris steals second base. And that one was really close, I'll tell you. Grody stepped right out in front of the plate and gunned one to second. The tag was made. It looked to be made a little behind the bag, maybe, or on top of it. Let's see it as we look at it on a television replay here, Jim. Well, the way it looks for me, and we'll look at it again here, Monty, looks like the call might have gone the A's way because there's the tag. We're looking at it awfully close. It looks like from this angle he got his right foot in. From the other angle, it looks like they had his left leg tagged before he got there. The important thing is, he's there. And Joe Rudy's job now is to move him over. Here's the pitch. Rudy slants it to right pitch. Campanaris rounding second. He's coming in to score the tying run of the ball game. Joe Rudy shot one of the ground right by the first baseman. And Campanaris scores the tying run of the game with nobody down. Well, last year, Jim, in the World Series, there was a very important play at second base involving a Cincinnati Reds player. And all the replays showed that Campanaris missed the tag on him. The umpire called him out. They're going to be looking this replay over from different angles many times, trying to decide whether or not Rep umpire uh, Russ Getz, the second base, made the correct call on Campanaris because it was a big one. Now here's Sal Bando. Nobody out. Eighth inning. Rudy on first. Bando's going to butt, and it's foul off the first base line. Bando hit a long double in the sixth inning. He's one for three in the ball game. Tom Seaver with a two-nothing lead from the first inning. Gave up the leadoff single, and then Campanaris stole safe. Picks the Bando again. He's going to bunt, and it's a hard bunt to the first baseman. No play at second. He didn't even look. He throws the first for the out, and Jerry Grody, the Mets catcher, is flinging his mask around in disgust. A left-handed throwing first baseman, Milner. I believe he had a play at second. He didn't even look at second base, and the ball was punted very hard. And now Yogi Berra goes to the mound as Reggie Jackson comes up. Well, Jim, what do you think? Well, I think we've had two controversial plays, one by a player, one by an umpire. The umpire, of course, as you called it, is... Russ gets to the American League down at second base. We looked at the television monitor in our booth as they showed that from three different angles. On one angle, you could say that Kathy Campanaris was safe. Now, in the American League, they're on the outfield side at second base, and that's the angle that showed that Campanaris could have been safe. Looking down from first base or from behind home plate, it looked like he was out. A close play, and then on the bunt pipe, the Milner at first base, as Monty described, he could have had and might have had Rudy going into second base, but never looked that way. Simply threw on the beyond at first base, sacrifice complete. The go-ahead run with one out is on at second base here in the eighth. 
Tom Terrific is in trouble as Reggie Jackson, who has struck out three times, steps in. Seaver gets set. Here's a pitch to Jackson. High fly ball. Left center field. Not deep at all. Joe Rudy holds on at second as Don Hahn puts Reggie Jackson away. Seaver elected to pitch to Jackson. Yogi Berra went to the mound and obviously asked him, what do you think? First base is open. Should we pitch to him or not? He did, and he got him again. So he has handled Reggie Jackson four times tonight. Now here's Gene Tennis, who has struck out, walked, and doubled. Joe Rudy in scoring position at second base. We're in the top half of inning number eight, a great pitcher's battle. Tom Seaver against Jim Fish Hunter, who has gone. The pitch to tennis, curve, strength gets caught. Tennis ripped a double right down the line in left field in the sixth inning to knock home Oakland's first run. Seaver sets and throws. Another curve to tennis is outside. One ball, one strike. Seaver looks at Rudy, throws to the plate, curveball, swinging strike two, and he has thrown Gene Tennis three big breaking pitches in a row. Boy, that last one was really a breaking ball that just snapped over that outside corner. Seaver grabs the ball. He sets, he throws. Swinging strike three, he poured it right by him. A great fastball by Seaver. His 12th strikeout of the ball game, and it leaves the go-ahead run at second base. So the score in the middle of the eighth inning is Oakland 2 and New York 2. Now, Tom Seaver was never in trouble at all, with the exception of a two-out walk and infield single in the fourth inning, until the sixth, when the Oakland A's went to work, and on a double by Bando and another by Tennis, made it 2-1. to one. And then, of course, to the top of the eighth inning, Camp and Harris, the man they wanted off the base, got a single, stole second, and Joe Rudy drove him home. And it's 2-2, two to two, and Seaver has been ripped, reached. And now it is Knowles against Seaver. And in the last of the eighth, it's Hong, Harrelson, and Seaver. And here's Monty. Don Hahn got a double in the fourth inning. Darrell Knowles' first pitch to Hahn is low and outside, ball one. Now the Met crowd gets into the act as everybody predicted they would. And it's a great crowd here in New York tonight. Probably around 55,000. The pitch on the way. Bouncing ball to deep short. Campanaris has got it. His throw to first is there in time. A little bit on the inside of the bag, but Pat Burke took it. So one up, one down, and that brings up Bud Harrelson. He'll turn around and bat from the right side now. He's one for here tonight. In a pitcher's battle like this, it who makes the first mistake? Now, Harrelson is being called back over to the on-deck area and is talking with Tom Seaver. I don't know what that conversation could be, so you get on, I'll knock you in, you reckon? <laughs> Bud Harrelson, his home is right in the Bay Area, just a few miles away from the home of the Oakland A's. He lives in Hayward, California. He's ready now. Here's a pitch from Knowles, and it is a strike call. Oakland third baseman Sal Bando playing very close to the bag at third and close to the foul line. Ditto for the big first baseman, Pat Burke. Knowles pitch to the plate. High fly ball off third base. Campanaris is going back. Joe Rudy's coming in. It's going to be Rudy making the catch. He's got it. Campanaris has a tremendous range out of the shortstop going left or right. A big collision in a game in Oakland in the Baltimore series between him and an outfielder. Now they're two down, and Tom Seaver is due to bat, and they're going to pinch hit for him. So both aces are out of the game, Jim. And Jim Beecham, a fine pinch hitter for the New York Mets, is going to come on against the left-hander Darrell Knowles. Beecham has been up twice before in the World Series and has failed to hit. Beecham, as the Mets go to their bench, Tom Seaver began to run in trouble late, giving up the tying run in the eighth inning. 
Those of you will remember that in the first game of the playoffs in Cincinnati when he was matched against Jack Billingham, Seaver weakened only in the late innings, gave up the two long balls to Pete Rose and Johnny Bench, the two home runs that beat him. And now I'll turn to Yogi Fields or Tom Seaver Fields that it's time for him to get out. It was two out and nobody on. They have gone to a pinch hitter for Tom Seaver. And they have their left-hander in the bullpen, Chuck McGraw is the only man left throwing, isn't it? Or is that Sadecki? It is Sadecki in the bullpen. Beecham, ready at the plate. Here's the pitch. Swinging, strike one. No, turned a fastball over on him. Beecham, Bonita, Oklahoma product. For the year, it's 279. Scores the New York Mets two, the Oakland A's two. Knowles misses outside of all. Beecham is not a home run hitting type, though he's a big guy. He did not hit a home run for the Mets during the year. In the World Series so far, he is 0 for 2. Knowles winding, here's the pitch. Swinging strike. One of the secrets of Darrell Knowles' success is to get the batters to go for bad pitches, and Beecham just chased a sink, sinking fastball that looked to be out of the strike zone from here. Knowles to the plate again. It is up high this time. Two balls, two strikes. The Oakland infield after the changes. Now is Bando at third, Campanaris at short, Kubiak at second, and Pat Burke is at first with Gene Tennis moving behind the plate. The A's have three men left on the bench, Canigliaro, Manguel, and Lewis. They're playing with only 23 men tonight. 2-2 two -two pitch. High fly ball to left field. Joe Rudy's moving over lots of time and lots of room. He's got it. So we go to the top half of the ninth inning, and we may be in a one-inning ball game now. It's the A's two and the Mets two. Count 12 and walk one. Now, Chuck McGraw, the man to whom you called about a month ago and said, listen, it is up to you to win or lose. Lieutenant and my job, McGraw is not coming on to pitch. But rather, Ray Sadecki is coming on. Sadecki has been in one game, pitched an inning and two-thirds, struck out three, allowed no walks, and walked nobody. In 31 games this year, 10 of which were starts, he was 5-4 with an home run average of 3.38. Well, why not Chuck McGraw? Well, McGraw went six innings in relief on Sunday afternoon, started the seventh, and they got to him in a hurry. And last night, as the New York Mets arrived from the West Coast, reporters asked McGraw how he felt. He said, I feel completely exhausted, but if they want me to go, I will go tonight. McGraw, a short man, is not being called on to come on to the ninth inning here to face Navalio, Burt, and Kubiak. He is a left-hander, as is, of course, McGraw. And uh, it has been the impetus lately, the momentum of the Oakland A's, who are down 2 to nothing since the very first of the New York Mets, but have now tied it up in the eighth, and now they go to the ninth. And, of course, the A's know they would love to get ahead in the ninth because when you get to the last of the inning here in New York, any Mets run can be the end of the ball game and the end of World Series Game 3. Now, for Leo to lead it off against the Becky, left-handed, left-handed, here's Bonnie. And the streak continues in World Series play. No pitcher picked a complete game in the series last year, and nobody has yet this year. Here's Vic Davalillo, who's hit very little against left-hand pitching this year. Ray Sadecki throws sidearm and misses outside ball one. Davalillo pulls off that plate. He bails out, as you call it. Runs down that line and picks up a little out. Gives the pitcher a tough strike zone because he's moving. Sadecki popping to the plate again. Line drive off the glove of Mian and out in the right field. That might be a base hit. Vic Davalio, the little pro who came through in such magnificent fashion for the Oakland A's in the playoffs against Baltimore. And one hard off the glove of Mian. That has a good chance of being a base hit. The scorers are working on it right now. They have three official scorers in World Series games. Pat Burke is the man up now for the Oakland A's. They have given a base hit to Davalillo on the ball. 
Garrett looking for the bunt. The pitch is taken outside by Burke. In order to move Davalio down, he's almost going to have to bunt the ball to the first base side. Because Wayne Garrett, the Met third baseman, is going to be right up in Burke's face with the time of the pitch gets to the plate. Davalio off first. Here's the pitch. Burke bunts it. Foul off the first base line. Now he's called it an error on Mian, his second error of the series. He made only nine for the entire season. Pat Burke at the plate with a count of one ball and one strike. Ray Sadecki set. Here's the pitch. Burke takes outside. That Grody comes out of that catcher's box like a sprinter off the starting block. Ray Sadecki has been with the Mets since 1970. He was also with the Giants a long time. He was with the St. Louis Cardinals originally and there a long time. 2-1 pitch. Bought it hard. Between the mound and first base. Nobody's covering first. Pat Burke has got an infield base hit. Pat Burke, a heavyweight first baseman for the A's. Bunted the ball perfectly in the crack. He got it past the mound. He had the first baseman, Milner, coming in for it. The second baseman, Mion, going over to cover. And he went right in the middle of him. And now Oakland will have a pinch runner. Alan Lewis will go in to run for Pat Burke at first base. Two on and nobody down. And Harry Parker and Tug McGraw are at it in the Mets bullpen. As Ted Kubiak, one of the fine utility infielders in the American League, comes to the plate. He's a switch hitter. He'll be batting right-handed here. But, Jim, I haven't seen the Mets that much. Do they pull any kind of trick plays on coverage or anything like that? No, the New York Mets play things pretty straight. They wait for the big inning offensively on, on defense. They seldom do that, but Yogi Bear is going to come out. The one thing I noticed, Monty, and we can check after the game, but it was just an observation. Parker and McGraw, who have been warming and are still warming now, were kind of bookends to Sadecki, who really did not throw that much down in the bullpen. It was kind of an afterthought to get Ray Sadecki going. They did give an error to Mion, but that was a hard smash. Off the bat of Davalio, that bounded off his glove and out into the outfield. And then, of course, mixed up in their infield there with nobody covered first base on the bunt. And so now Kubiak is coming up, and apparently they're going to go to the bullpen. Rusty Staub is walking off the field. Think for a while, left hander. Here comes not McGraw. Yes, who? Well, we were wondering why he did not come in. Barrow went to Sudeke. And not all of the trouble with none out is of Sudeke's doing. The error by the on certainly is not. Although there was a mix-up on the play on the bunt, nobody, meaning second baseman Neon, or Sadecki covered first as Milner fielded the ball. And so here we are, the New York Mets, who are in command behind Tom Seaver all the way, getting their two runs in the first inning on a home run by Wayne Gill, back-to-back singles by Neon and Staub, and a wild pitch by the Oakland seller, Catfish Hunter. All the way in charge, that is, until the sixth, when doubled by Bando and Tennis made it 2-1. And then the eighth, when Campanaris single, stole second, and the close play was driven on by Rudy to make it 2-2. Two two. They decided in the last of the eighth with two out and none on to bat for Tom Seaver. They brought on Sadecki. Two men have gone up. One on an error, one on a done out. The fans go wild for Cus McGraw. Now, Joe Rudy has set a series record of seven foot up. For a left field in the nine-inning game. Which, of course, will just be a bit of trivia. Because the fact remains, the game can be won or lost right here in the ninth inning. And Tug McGraw, as so often happens, is the man called on. As we told you, Doggy Barrett told him about four to six weeks before the season was over, look, I'm going to give you the ball. I'm going to call for you in all of the big situations. You're going to win the tennis for me. Well, the Mets and I are going to go down. And during the Mets' final 24 game, McGraw allowed only two earned runs and 31 in the third inning. And that's such he registered 10 saves, and he also won four. Now, McGraw in the 10-7 game 
on Sunday afternoon, started the six and worked six innings, giving up three runs, seven hits, he struck out six and walked one. It was not a superior start, and he later got in trouble. In the twelfth, when he gave up a triple to Jackson and walked Kenneth, and that was the end of him there. As we said, he said, I'm exhausted, but I'll be ready tonight if they need me. Now, he's been in both of the previous games that worked eight innings. The total that Tom Seaver worked tonight. And overall, he has won one and lost none. Given up six hits, four runs, four walks, and non-strikeouts. And a season record. And you got to remember that Chuck McGraw was not at all effective in the early going. He was one of the big disappointments for the Mets, and that plus all of the disabled players is one of the reasons why the Mets at All-Star time were in last place. His earn run average, even now, is 3.86. So you know what kind of closing part of the season he had to bring it down to 3.86. But he did save 25 ball games. So as they play the Scottish kick for Chuck McGraw, they're back to action. Kubiak is switching to stepping in. Then it's going to have none out in a 2-2 two two ball game in the ninth. Here's what... All right, the Met first baseman, Milner, is going to be playing very shallow. The third baseman, Garrett, is shallow. The shortstop, Harrison, played right on top of the bag at second. Nobody's as short at all. The pitch to Kubiak, punted out and fouled off. McGraw gets off that mound in a hurry. It's going to be his job to cover the third baseline here. To the Oakland A's batting in the top of the ninth inning. McGraw, good fielder, Lindsay. Yes. Low. You might have seen how McGraw broke over to third base, the place that Kubiak will probably try and bunt the ball, He's trying to protect that line so that Garrett can stay on third base and they can force that runner. One one pitch. Fouled off. One and two. Runners at second and at first. A one-two delivery. He's around. Pitch is high and it's two-two. Kubiak getting his information now to see if he's bunting all the way. Apparently was on that pitch. He's around. McGraw has it. There's the fourth. No other play. Might have had a play at first. McGraw really came off that mound. Let's look at it again as I think Kubiak maybe tried to force the ball by McGraw as he broke toward that third base foul line Garrett as you said Lindsay might have had a play except he did not have good possession of the ball the ball got stuck in his webbing let's watch Tug again he really broke off the mound but not a very good bunt two strikes he was just trying to hit the ball somewhere in fair territory so now there's one out runners first and second Angel Manguel is coming up now to bat for Darrell Knowles 0 for 2 in the series 1 for 9 in the playoffs during the season, hit 224, three homers, 13 runs batted in. Angel Manguel. Score tied 2 2. The A's batting in the top of the ninth inning. Lewis, the runner at second now. Kubiak's the runner at first. He really took a ripple, swinging strike. Lewis at second base, a dangerous base-stealing threat. He's led several leagues in the minors, really keeping him close. There he is. Foul it back. It's two strikes. With Knowles out of the ball game, Paul Lindblad is throwing in the bullpen for the Oakland A's.
Tug has gotten some pitches up. In fact, that last screwball that Manguel jumped down was almost in his eyes. Runners at first and second on 0-2 pitch. Steps off. I would guess that Tuck's got to be tired. It's like asking the starting pitcher after pitching a complete game to come back with a day and a half rest. If he gets Campanaris out, he'll get a standing ovation when he goes into that Met dugout. Camp. Watch it again. Looked like a perfect pitch to Manguel. He had thrown him one screwball down just about the outside corner. You can see the reaction of McGraw wanting the pitch and the reaction of Manguel in disgust. Campanaris coming up. He's had two hits. Yogi Berra. Dick Williams. Ground ball foul. Off the line at third glove by Garrett. Strike one. McGraw in game two. He caromed the ball off Campanera's helmet. Two strikes on him. the pitching coach moving over with Yogi. McGraw stepped off. He wants the signs again from Brody. Cabanera steps out at the plate. Two balls, two strikes, two men out, score tied, 2-2. Two, two. Two, two delivery. Inside. It'll be an automatic start for the runners now. Lewis at second, Kubiak at first. McGraw thought he had that one. The runners will be moving on the pitch. In the air to center. Don Hahn is there. Listen to the ovation now for Tug McGraw. No run. A hit. An error and two men left. And in the middle of the ninth inning, the score is tied. Oakland two and the Mets two. Pitcher with Bonnie Moore, Paul Lindblad, who pitched the three batters Sunday. Two got on on Mike Andrews error. He is not with the ball club anymore. The A's are playing with only 23 men. He retired one other. Is on the mound now. And Growl, who pinch hit, stays in the ball game, goes to center field. Vic Davalio comes on the first base, and Lindblad is the pitcher. Last of the night, two to two, leadoff batter. Garrett to face Lindblad. Here's Bonnie. 
And the first pitch is swung on it, blitzed up in the air, right out behind third. Bert Campanera is the shortstop of Oakland, streaks over to the foul line and picks it off. Boy, what a pressure cooker to come into, Jim. Paul Lindblad out of the bullpen and the crowd yelling, go get them, men. 55,000 strong as he gets out of the mound. And this is one of the toughest situations for a pitcher. He comes into a game with a chance to be a losing pitcher, never having had a chance to have been a winner. But he got the first batter in Garrett. Here is Felix Mion. Mion has singled twice and lined out hard twice. Once to short, once to center. Lindblad pitch, a strike call. Paul Lindblad, 31 years old, is home. Now is made in Arlington, Texas. But he's from Emporia, Kansas. Lindy's pitch to Mian is outside of all. Lindblad appeared in 36 games for the A's this year, 33 in relief. Seven years in the major leagues. He's pitched in 374 ball games before this year, and he's a major league record holder in most games appeared in by a pitcher without making an error. Fastball swung on and fouled down, and it hits the A's catcher Gene Tennis and knocks him over. Tennis still down, Monty, and as he goes down, we're reminded what we've been keeping track of. Billy Canigliaro is the only other man aside from pitchers that are available to the Oakland A's. If Tennis is out of there. They're in a real problem because they now must take Tennis out. Canigliaro is the only man that's going to be able to come in, and they'd have to go to someone else to do the catching. And let's go back to the Mike Andrews two-error situation in Sunday's second game. The team physician said yesterday that Andrews needed work on his arm and sent him home and retired him for the rest of the World Series. There are those who have said that, no, that is not the case. Andrews was simply fired by the Oakland A's management. The Oakland A's applied to the commissioner's office to be allowed to reinstate Manny Trio reserve Andrews. The commissioner has said, no, Trio cannot suit up. They can suit up Mike Andrews, but the A's say they can't find him. Tennis is up now and apparently will remain in the game. But the sum and substance is that there are only 23 players on the A's active roster for this game, and they're down to one more man that can play in the field. Other than that, they've got Blue and Olsen starting pitches, Fingers, Pena, and Odom left in the uh, bullpen. The Mets have much more to maneuver with as we may go to extra innings. One out of the night, tennis is up, Lindblad is ready, and so is money. All right, Paul Lindblad ready to go to work on Felix Mion at a ball and two strikes. One out, last half of the ninth inning, tied up two and two. Lindblad cranks it up. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball is short. Campanera charges it. He's got it. Throws a strike to Del Leo at first, and there are two away. Jim, the Andrews story explains why the A's have one of the men absent, but they have another one absent. And the story there is that you must turn in a 25-man eligibility roster to playoffs in World Series by a certain date, September 1st. The A's turned in that 25-man list, and on that list was a player by the name of Jose Morales, a pinch-hitting catcher. After that list was turned in, the A's sold Morales to Montreal of the National League. And then in the playoffs, got permission to replace Morales with another player. North became injured then, and the National League has refused to allow a person to replace Morales on that 25-man roster. Here's Rusty Staub, and the first pitch is swung on, and foul tip for strike one, and Paul Lindblad wanted that one back right after he threw it. It's something that Dick Williams and the players do not want to discuss, nor would Charles O'Finley discuss with NBC Sports this afternoon the situation, but as far as this game is concerned, it really takes the manager of genius away from Dick Williams. He has that many men to work with. And he's a very versatile man. Francis Davili will play two positions in the game. Here's a pitch to Rusty Staub. It's inside a half for a ball. There are two down in the ninth inning. Davalillo opened the game in center field. He's now at first base. Tennis opened at first base. He's now behind the plate. Pat Burke came on as a pinch hitter and stayed in the game to play first base, and now he's gone. Here's a one-on-one -on -one pitch. Up high, ball two. Paul Lindblad did not win a game for the Oakland A's until the last week of the season. He pitched a full season without a win. He finally got a victory over the Chicago White Sox in relief on September the 28th. Left-hander comes to the plate, two and one. Stop, big tie for ball three. 
They've got a long ball hitting right-handed batter on deck. This is a man Paul Lindblad really would like to get out. A crippled left-handed hitting Rusty Stubbs. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Strike call. It's 3-2. and two. Lindblad's basic pitches, a fastball and a slider. And once in a while, he'll throw a changeup, which he developed this year. Raleigh Fingers, the ace of the open bullpen, is up now throwing. You don't suppose McGraw and Fingers could appear in seven games out of seven if this thing goes all the way. McGraw's already been in three out of three. Three two pitch to stop. Popped up behind the plate, but it's near the stand. Tennis is chasing it over there. It's going to land in the seat. Staub is still alive. And Lindblad still has to throw another strike. Leon Jones on deck. Boy, what a pressure pitching job that McGraw put on in the ninth inning. He got Ted Kubiak. The butt back to him with runners at first and second and nobody down. They got horse play at third. Then Manguel took a call third strike on a surprise fastball. Here's a 3-2. Line drive left center field. Hit well. Joe Rudy's not going to get to this one. It's going to go to the fence. It takes one hop and goes over the wall. And Rusty Todd has got a ground rule double. A base hit now and the New York Mets could win it. You begin to wonder now and look for Dick Williams to come out. Raleigh Fingers is warming up. Lindblad left-hander. Cleon Jones threw up a right-handed. Hit it. First, they could put Jones on. There's only one run is all that matters. And then go to the left-hander, John Milner, who is due up next. Which could, of course, force Yogi to go to his right-handed hitters. And he's got some, including Willie May. They're going to put him on. They are going to watch. Leon Jones and play the percentages. So it's going to be up to John Milner. He comes with a chance with a man in scoring position in the ninth inning. Rusty Stop fought Paul Lindblad off until he got the count at three and two. Fouled off one right straight up in the air. Then Lindblad got a high fastball in there and Rusty rode it to the wall and left center field. It took one hop and went over the fence. You just wonder. Here comes Milner up. We just wondered whether or not they might go for lightning twice within the couple of games of the World Series. Willie Mays, but Milner's going to be allowed to bat. Lindblad traditionally has had as much, if not more, trouble getting left-handers out than he has right-handers. And sort of a unique twist. Dick Williams is calling the played umpire, Jerry Newdecker, over to the dugout. Conferring about something, there's some activity in the Mets dugout that caused the A's coaches to tap Dick Williams on the shoulder, and they started looking to the lineup card. They're going to find out what's going on here. I don't know what this could be about unless Williams is trying to get a little more time for Raleigh Fingers to get loose out of the bullpen. They tell us that that was probably what all the situation on the light changing out in Oakland was about on Sunday. There was an argument as to when the light should be turned on. But whatever this is all about, Jerry Newdecker goes back to the plate. All right, the pressure is on. John Milner at the plate. Oh, Lynn Brad on the mound. Rusty Staub at second. Lynn Blad gets set. Here's the pitch to Milner. Foul all the way. Strike one in Oakland is playing Milner as a dead pull hitter. They're giving him the left side of the infield here. Bert Campanaris is way over towards second base. Even with the left-hander Lynn Blad pitching. Out in center field, Angel Manguel is swung around to the right side. One strike count on the net first baseman. The pitch to him. Curve. Strike two call. Lindblad threw that one right at his shoulder and it dives down through the strike zone knee high. It's no balls, two strikes. The A's through, the Mets through. Last half of the ninth inning, game three of the 1973 World Series and it's all on the line right here. Here's the pitch. 
Long drive, right field. It's over Reggie Jackson's head. He reaches up. He's got it. On a no-ball, two-strike pitch, Paul Lindblad grooves one to the left-hander hitting John Milner. And he struck that ball hard to right. Jackson went on the run and picked it off. We've got extra innings in game three. And the score is the open A's to the New York Mets two. For the series that is captivating the nation in record numbers. We are going into the 10th inning with Doug McGraw against the top of the open A's batting order just beyond Cavaliers. So far in the game, here's what happened in scoring. The Mets' Wayne Garrett started the game with a home run off Catfish Hunter. Beyond got on with a single, and they got him around. He scored on a wild pitch, and that's the last scoring for the Mets. Catfish Hunter went six innings, no two. Oakland got their first run off Tom Seaver in the sixth on a double by Van Doan, a following double by Tennis. They tied the game in the eighth inning. On a single, a stolen base by Campanares and a single by Rudy. Here we go to the 10th inning, and Tark McGraw against Joe Rudy, and once again, Jim Simpson. All right, Monty, Rudy is two for four, plus sending Han deep, almost 400 feet away, to haul in his long drive back in the sixth inning. Rudy has driven in the run of this game. Leads it off against Chuck McGraw, grounds a foul up the third baseline. This is the first time that there's been more, that there have been two extra inning games of the same series since 1958. But the Milwaukee Braves and Yankees played a couple of ten-inning games. And it's the first time there have been successive extra-inning games in a World Series since 1933, since the Yankees beat Washington. Yes, sir, it's been 40 years since Washington, which no longer has baseball, was in a World Series. One strike to count to Rudy in a 2-2 ball game in the tenth. Breaking ball, misses strike uh, ball one. One ball, one strike to Rudy with Sal Bando on deck. Well, it is another one of those games. Over four hours and 40 minutes Sunday afternoon. This ball game now fast approaching the three hours. Breaking pitch again. The two ball misses outside. Two balls, one strike. McGraw's effectiveness in the ninth inning was set up by his screw ball. He did most of his damage with good fastball. Two balls, one strike. McGraw already in the tenth. Two runs, eight hits, and one error for both teams. Doug is back with another screw ball that misses up high, and it's three and one. Nobody in the net pool for him. At the moment, Harry Parker has been throwing a great deal of the time. And with nearly the top of the batting order for the Oakland A's, nobody is up yet, although Lindblad was slotted number seven in the lineup. Three balls, one strike, another pitch, line to left field, overcomes Cleon Jones and takes the line drive. Rudy tonight retired for the third time, and he's hit the ball hard for the five times he's been at bat. That'll bring up Sal Bando. Struck out on a slider from Tom Seaver in the first. Line to left in the fourth. Doubled and scored the first run in the sixth. And sacrificed successfully in the eighth. Doug McGraw, the left-hander, throws him a two ball. Swinging strike. Strike one. Out on deck is Reggie Jackson, who hasn't had it that good. Three strikeouts and a short fly to center field with men on base. Back again, long drive down into the corner, along the left field line. Over goes Jones. It is a fair ball off the wall. Jones has it on one hop. Mando trips going around and goes into second base. And he's out. The ball gets away. Safe. Mando trips going around first base. That was an easy out, but the ball got away from Neon, who was down at second base and may be hurt. As Bando barreled in, he was your shot out after tripping going around first base. But when he plowed into the second baseman, Neon, the ball got away from Felix, and Neon is just now picking himself up. And Bando is safe at second base. Well, Bando may be hurt, too. He's lifting around a little bit, Jim. Neon being ministered to, talked to by the trainer. That is a base hit, of course, off the wall. They are flashing that now, and there will be also an error registered. Against, I would assume, Neon, although there it is, Neon at second base for dropping the ball when Mando hit it. Now, Neon. 
Can you believe this? Nine errors throughout a regular season. This is his third error, and we're in the third game of the World Series. One of his errors on Saturday afternoon allowed Matlock to go down with two unearned runs in a two-to-one ball game. And now his error here has put the go-ahead run in a two-to-two ball game on at second base with Reggie Jackson. Always dangerous, but as we said, not effective tonight. Do up. Jim, uh, Mian's really had to take a couple of tough errors tonight. I can't think of a tougher one than he just took right then. He fearlessly dived right into the oncoming spikes of Sal Bando, who's a 200-pounder, and put that glove over there at second base. I think he was surprised that Bando was coming, and then he just had to turn around. He sort of dived right down in there, and it was a fantastic collision. Mian is dirty from head to toe, and lucky, I think, to really be alive. It was Reggie Jackson. Struck out three times against Tom Seaver before flying to short center field with a man in scoring position in the eighth inning. Jackson, the left-hander, had four hits Sunday. Ground high, Hopper to Mian, who takes it on the second off, goes on to first base. As over to third base goes Bando. Jackson retired again, swinging on the first pitch as he did in the eighth, and he flied to short center. And that'll bring it up to Gene Tennis who was one for three plus a walk. His double drove in Bando in the sixth inning. And Tennis in the top half of this inning, I should say in the lower half of the ninth inning, really was hit on a swinging foul and went to the dirt and was some question whether or not he would return. Yogi's going to let uh, McGraw make a decision here probably whether to fix the Tennis a right-hand batter or Davalee or a left-hander. Now the decisions are made, Monty, because Barrow's coming back, Brody starts back and now returns to McGraw as Harrelson goes out to shortstop. He's got two out on the Oakland 10th. And it's two to two. I tell you what, I guess a lot of people have to go to work tomorrow. He's got a lot of people have left Shea Stadium. It was jam-packed and most of the upper deck, at least down the right field line, has cleared out in a two to two ball game in the 10th. McGraw apparently is going to pitch to Gene Tennant with a go-ahead run at third base a high ball one now naturally Mion keeps cutting over behind the pitcher Doug McGraw on the return throw by Grody in case he gets by him to cut off Bando trying to come in from third base McGraw ready again and throws down low held on to by Grody could be that they're going to pitch Tennis very carefully, and if they must put him on, they will. Now they're going to, after 2-0. and all. Here's 3-0, and all, as they will walk in intensely. Try to get Tennis to go for a bad pitch when he would not, and the count went to 2-0. and all. They simply decided, let's put him on. Bando's over third base. And that'll bring up Davalio, who is one for four, and he reached on an arrow. Reggie Jackson, who went over five tonight, did in a sense do one good thing. His ground ball to the right side enabled Bando to go from second to third. And we all remember what happened back in the first inning with a man at third base, Neon. He was wild pitched home. That was the second of the two New York runs. The other was a leadoff home run by Wayne Garrett in the first inning. The A's have done their scoring lately, in the sixth and in the eighth. Here is Gavileo, a little left-hander who takes that step, who bails out as Monty describes, who runs up the line as he swings. First pitch, strike on the outside corner. Gavileo back in the ninth inning, lined a shot on one hop off the on glove, and he rolled out into right field, and they gave the on his second error of the series on that play, and now in the very next inning, and Bando builds into him, Mion draws his first. He's already pitching from the stretch, throws the screw ball, drive high, right field, stop, comes in, this should be it, McGraw's heading for the dugout. Stop, grabs it, one hand. No run, one hit, one arrow, and two men left. We go to the last of the tenth, and we're all caught up in game number three. It's two to two. And Jerry Brody, all for four tonight. Stepped in, right-handed, Hitting catcher, five defensive players against Paul Lindblad, who is the third Oakland pitcher tonight, coming on in the ninth inning, getting a little trouble after two out, but getting out of it as Miller sent a sinking line drive. 
There's the ground ball towards second. Subiak up with it. Stout arms it over to first, and there's one out in the New York 10th. Brody hitting the first pitch from Paul Lindblad. Don Hahn, one for four tonight, has hit the ball twice very hard his first two times up. He lined to Rudy and left in the first, and then followed with a double in the fourth. Inside the bag at third base. Since then, he's been retired on an easy fly ball to left and a ground to the Campanaris at shortstop. Kathy has shown us tonight that he, like Harrelson, fine fielding shortstop. Two of the premier fielding shortstops in baseball playing in the World Series of 73. Lindblad, the left-hander, throws the fastball. It misses. It's ball one. Well, the team that wins it will have the obvious edge. Tomorrow night, John Matlack for New York and Holston for the Oakland A's. Rematch of the opening day assignment. Down ball, right side. Kubiak there has another shot and throws on to Davileo, the first baseman. And that's two down. Caught on easy ground ball. Kubiak at second base. And that'll bring up Harrelson. It was three for eight, getting three base hits on Sunday, and he is one to four tonight. A single in the sixth inning that almost took Catfish Hunter's head off. And glove off. Right back to the box. Oakland two, New York two, last of the tenth game three of the World Series. McGraw in a jacket walks out on deck. Nobody throwing and either bullpen. Lindblad is ready and throws. Strike on the outside corner. Hells and Bunner through the ball. And this is the first time we've seen Bud tonight batting from the right side. Going against the left-hander. Check that. This is the second time. No. Also had him swing around to the right side of the plate. One of the quick hitters in the ball game. Kubiak, who's retired two-man here in the tenth, is another one. One ball, one strike to help. Crowd gets very quiet now with two out in the last of the tenth. That pitch is down low. It's two and one. Eddie Yost, the first over third base, claps it up for Bud Health. Harrelson, a better hitter for average from the right side, where he is now, grounds this from Passios to coach the third. Foul, and it's two and two. Well, Tennis started at first base, then Burke. Now Davalillo is there. Green started at second base. Kubiak is there now. Davalillo started in center. Manguel is there now. Fawcett was the catcher. He's out of the game. Tennis is there. As Dick Williams continues to maneuver with not much room left to maneuver more. Two to the count, two to the score. Two out in the tenth. And Blood back and throws outside. Three and two. Well, do you wonder if Elson gets on just what kinds of moves, if any, Yogi Berra will make? Will he go to Willie Mays, the right hander, and take McGraw out? Foul tip. Fingers, he is not throwing. In the bullpen for the Oakland A's. The ball game now almost three hours old here at Chase Stadium in New York. Very little scoring, and at least see some kind of performance from Tom Seaver tonight, who left after eight innings, striking out 12 men, getting up seven innings. Ground ball, right side, base hit. Winning run potentially on at first base, and here comes Willie Mays. Started as a rookie in 1951 and with the New York Giants went all the way to the World Series. Closing out his career here in 1973, 22 years later, and he's went all the way to the World Series with another New York National League team, the Mets. He had a run scoring RBI in the first game and another one in game number two. Number 24 flashes up on the scoreboard. Two to two, two out of the tenth. They're looking for some of that maze magic. Right-handed batter against the left-hander Paul Lindblad, and nobody busy at all in the A's bullpen. Lindblad throws to Mays, ground ball, in the hole. Campanelli goes to second base. He's out of second base on the first play. First play, Elson out of second base. Mays, first ball swinging, 
Campanares went into the hole to his right, turn and fire to the second baseman, Kubiak, and in a close play, he's gone down. No runs, one hit. No errors and one left. At the end of 10, it's still New York 2, Oakland 2. They're back at the of New York, and now we're going to the 11th inning. Yet another pitcher, Harry Parker. Beaver started, the decking came on, and pitched to a couple of batters in the ninth inning before Chuck McGraw came on, and he was batted for by Willie Mays. And now Parker, a right-hander who has been in one game, pitched an inning, gave up one hit and no run, is on for his second World Series of Dunn. That pause as he warms up, 30 seconds for station identification. And Terry Parker, and here is Monty Moore. Harry Parker won eight games and lost four for the Mets this year with an ERA of 3.34. Paul Lindblad, left-hand batter, ready. Here's a pitch to him and it's outside ball in. Lindblad is one of the best all-around athletes on the Oakland A's staff. He's an outstanding diver. He was a former national javelin throwing champion. Good hitter among the pitchers. Pitches low for ball two with two balls and no strikes. Dick Williams. Going with Paul Lindblad as the leadoff batter here in the 11th inning. Dead Kubiak and Angel Mangua will fall. 2-0 pitch. Great call. Lindy taking all the way. Oakland has only one man left on the bench, Billy Canigliaro. He was swinging the bat for a while. But Dick Williams elected to go with Lindblad. And the pitch just swung on him. That's back to his two balls, two strikes. So this is the fourth net picture of the ball game. Beaver started, Sadecki and McGraw worked. The pitch to Lindblad, fouled out of play down the left field line. It's still two and two. Well, they said the Mets haven't done it easy all year, and the A's have sort of had a saying on their ball club all year long. They don't win them easy, and they don't lose them easy. And that's another example. Two-two pitch. Line drive to the shortstop. Harrelson's got it. Oh, Lindblad hits the pretty well. A little sinking liner off to the right of Harrelson, and he came up for the ball. One down here is Ted Kubiak, a switch hitter. Dick Williams has used four pinch hitters in the game. Here's the pitch to... Kubiak, and it's inside for ball one. Pat Burke, Hayser, Salou, Darren Johnson, and Angel Mangual have all come up as pinch hitters. Yogi Bear is used two. Beecham and Mays. There's ball two to Kubiak. Two balls and no strikes. Both the Mets and the A's had runners in scoring position in the ninth inning and couldn't get them across, and both men had, both teams had a man on in the tenth inning. Open at two on. Pitch is high, ball three to Kubiak. Harry Parker's been up in that bullpen quite a few times tonight. Coming into a game like this, he's got to be a little bit nervous. Three and oh pitch. Ball four, Kubiak is on. That's only the third Oakland A's player to receive a free pick at the first tonight. McGraw walked one. That was intentional. Beaver walked one. And now here is Angel Mangual, the Oakland center fielder who came on the pinch hit for Darrell Lowe in the ninth inning and took a call third strike. Bert Cavanaugh is on deck. That's about halfway looking for a bunt. Garrett's playing very shallow at third. Here's a pitch. Curve. Right. Oh. Manuel fell off that plate. Ball turned the corner and went right down through the strike zone. It's no balls, one strike. Manuel is liable to hit the ball anywhere. The Mets playing to hit it to right center. He has good power. He hasn't played much for Oakland this year. He ended up being a number three center fielder. Here's a pitch to him. Curve. Strike two call. And Manuel has not swung the bat in the last three pitches thrown to him for the call. Third strike in the ninth inning. And now the first two thrown by Parker here are curve balls, and he's looked at both of them. (laughs) 
Milner holding against Kubiak. Archer throws. Fastball just missing. And it didn't miss by much. I would look for him to go back to the breaking ball here. He must have realized that Manuel didn't like it too much. He's throwing two good ones, and Angel fits both of them. Big hole between the third baseman and shortstop on the left side of the infield. Parker set, checks the runner, throws to the plate. It's in the dirt. Nice block by Grody. Boy, what a fine job this guy does behind the plate. One of the great pleasures of working a World Series is being able to see the players from the other league that you only hear about during the season. Parker, 2-2. Delivers. Fastball. Swing and a miss. Third strike. The catcher drops the ball. Manguel goes to first. And Kubiak goes to second. Parker struck out Manguel and Grody, whom we've just been talking about his defense, didn't handle the third strike. He tried to catch the ball one-handed, and now they're saying that it was a foul. Oh, oh he's out. He couldn't run to first base. Ben Wells took off to first with a runner on at first. He couldn't run. But Kubiak is able to advance to second base. But now Campanaris bats a runner at second base. Campy came up in the ninth inning. With two men on. And McGraw got him on a screw ball to pop up to center field. Buzz Tapper starts throwing in the Met bullpen. Two down. Kubiak off second. The pitch to Campanera to the curve outside. Ball one. That is 14 Oakland A's fighters to strike out in this ball game. Beaver got 12 of them. Campanera is ready for the 1 and 0 pitch. Strike, whistling right through there. 1 and 1. Ed Kubiak away from second and two down. Parker throws. Curveball swung on and missed back two. Boy, I tell you, the suspense in this ball game has been there. For a 2 2 game, there have been a lot of runners in scoring position. Marker's ahead of Campanero to the ball and two strikes. Here comes the pitch. Curveball foul off the right field line. Stone, a left-hander, has joined the right-hander out of the bullpen, Buzz Capra. The game is on the field right now where Harry Parker's got it all to himself. One ball, two strikes on Burt Campanaris with Ted Kubiak, a base hit away from coming in with a tie-breaking run. Buzzing. They've been out on the edges of their seats for about two hours here. The pitch inside the corner. Two balls, two strikes. Now Parker ready again. Here's a pitch. Line drive, left center field, base hit. Ed Kubiak rounding third. He's coming home. Here comes the throw, and Campanera goes all the way to second, and they cut it off and throw it to second. They get him, but the run does score. Garrett cut the ball off of the pitcher's mound and threw to second to get Campanera, but his base hit did score Ted Kubiak before they got him. So Oakland has broken the tie at the A's three and the Met two. Well, I don't think we have to spell it out for the money in the last of 11th inning. Paul Inblad gets the job done against three of the toughest hitters in the New York Mets lineup. It is the Oakland A's who will take a two games to one lead. But then, who knows? 11th inning, his month. Wayne Garrett, the leadoff man against Paul Inblad, a check swing liner right through the box in the center field, a base hit. Wayne Garrett keeps the Mets alive. 
He tried to stop his swing on a breaking ball up high and landed right over the pitcher's head in the center field. So the Mets have the tying run on, and here is Felix Mion, who really can handle that bat. So Wayne Garrett, who has been tough on Oakland the entire series, has opened up a door in inning number 11. And Raleigh Fingers is going to be called in out of the Oakland bullpen, possibly here. He's throwing hard, and Dick Williams is going to the mound to talk to Paul Lindblad. I'm sorry, Marty. While he's out there talking, we'll uh, remind you again that we are now in the 11th inning of a ball game that's about three hours and ten minutes old. And a ball game that started out with an absolutely capacity house. And that means many more than 50,000 here at Chase Stadium in New York. But it is late New York time, about before midnight. And many, many people have left Chase Stadium heading for home, choosing to listen on the radio or take the chances that it'll be on television still when they get home. Raleigh Fingers being called in in the 11th inning after the Oakland A's came on to tie it up. In the 8th inning, he went until the 11th inning when the Oakland A's went ahead by the score of 3-1 on the run scoring single by Burke Campanaris. His third hit of the night. Campanaris has been something else. As a matter of fact, his second hit of the night. After that, he stole second and came home with a tying run on Rudy's base hit in the 8th inning. Now in the 11th inning, he started everything by driving in the go-ahead run, Ted Kubiak. But now, in the last of the 11th inning, Garrett, as described by Monty, just simply tried to check a swing against the breaking pitch that was well out of the strike zone. He didn't go all the way around, but he checked it and lined it right over the head of Paul Lindblad and into center field. Now, beyond, you know, as we said, seldom strike out. He is a good man that may be up there to bump, may be up there on the run. But I would imagine that home money more, even in the World Series, when you are the home team, you want to make sure you tie it up before you try to win it. And so the odds are that Dion is up there to do one thing, and that is to bunt. Raleigh Fingers, like Doug McGraw, has seen more than his share of duty here in the World Series. Fingers, well, this is the third game, and it's the third game for Raleigh. As you know, Matt Black, or rather McGraw, had pitched eight innings in two games and came on and pitched tonight. He has won one and lost none. Fingers is 0-1 in two games and pitched six innings. And Fingers, who is very effective and has been, Monty, has not been effective that much here in the World Series. In six innings, he has ballooned to a six earned run average. Raleigh Fingers is a very strong right-hander, and my last recollection of Raleigh, before the air by Mike Andrews was at second base, when he threw a very good pitch to Willie Mays, only to have him grounded on one hop, bounced it over his head in the center field for a run-tying RBI single, and Raleigh simply threw his glove up in the air. He's got a chance to even himself now. The A's are out in front, three to two, but the tying run is on at first base with none out. Fingers is ready, Neon is ready, and Marty is ready. All right. Felix Neon, tough little right-handed batter. Fingers pitch three and a third innings the first time out, two and two thirds the next, and here he goes to work. Get off first base. Davalillo holding against him and ready to go into the plate. Here's the pitch. Mion squares around, bunts it hard to the first base side. Davalillo's got it, tags out Mion, and now the Mets have the tying runner in scoring position with one out. And they have Rusty Staub and Cleon Jones, two of their big hitters, that try to knock in that go ahead run. Leon, a good punt. Move Garrett in. And here comes Wes Sock out to talk to Raleigh Fingers now. Rusty Sobs had two hits in this game. One a bouncer through the left side of the infield. The other a double to left center field that took one hop and bounced over the fence for a ground rule double. So the Mets are hit away from tying the ball game. A pass ball by usually very reliable Jerry Grody allowed Ted Kubiak to get into scoring position in the top of the 11th inning after Manguel struck out. And then Campanaris knocked him in. Now the Mets get a break on a check swing single and the sacrifice has moved their man up and here's Rusty Schaub. Fingers come to the plate. Hard step in there. Called strike. 
Gay's outfielders poised and ready to throw. If they get that ball, Rudy in left. Mangrell in center, Jackson in right. They all have strong arms. Here's the pitch to stop. Popped up. Center field. Angel Mangrell is back under the ball. He makes the catch, and there are two down. Now, Cleon Jones comes up. Jones, the hottest hitter for the Mets. During their stretch to the pennant in the net, as in this ball game, gone 0 for 4 with a walk. And the big hitters in this game, Jackson and Jones, have been stopped completely tonight, Jim. Well, there's signs everywhere, Monty, that say you got to believe. But obviously, hundreds and thousands of Mets fans do not believe. The tying run is down there at second base, and Cleon Jones, as we have described, is quite a hitter. Although he's hitless tonight, but he came in as the top man in base hits in the World Series of five. All he has to do is get one, and we got a three-to-three ball game. But some of the you gotta believers don't believe and are heading for the exit. Wayne Garrett, off second. Rally finger set. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside. It's one and all. Oh. Yays play Jones straight away. Reggie Jackson doing some knee bends out in right field. Dick Davalio, very close to the first base foul line, and he is the A's first baseman. He's the only man really overshifted for Jones. Finger pitch. Strike on the outside corner. A hard sinking fastball. Fingers has one of the biggest breaking sliders of all pitchers at ball. But he came out of that bullpen and has thrown nothing but smoke so far. Jared leads away. Fingers feels a glance at him. Comes to the plate. Just missed outside. Two balls and a strike. Leon Jones, one of the Mets, who was on the 1969 World Championship team for New York. He cocks the bat. Fingers ready. Here's the pitch. Fastball swung out late and fouled up into the crowd right over the top of the Mets dugout. So fingers now goes to a two ball, two strike count. Oakland leading three to two. Last half of inning number 11, game three of the World Series. The game started a long time ago by two great right handers, Catfish Tom and Tom Seaver. They're both gone and no longer a part of it. Fingers set, on comes the arm. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball to shortstop. Campanaris has got it. He throws the first. The A's win game number three on a sensational relief job by Raleigh Fingers. The final score of the ball game as Oakland takes a two to one edge in the game, three to two.